Palestinians are in the midst of a genocide perpetrated by Israel who have the full active backing and support of the United States and many other white supremacist colonialist nations. You can help by going to GazaEsims.com and purchasing SIM cards to be used by residents of Gaza as the IDF and other world powers attempt to institute a communications blackout so their crimes against humanity are less visible. Nothing else matters if we normalize this. Welcome to Double Progression Trouble, the show where my co-host Sophie apparently and I double up on Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression. How it works is we each pull at least 48 packs of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, or 24 packs from two booster sets at a time, moving chronologically through the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! We then play two best of three matches before moving on to the next two booster sets. The series is divided into seasons based on the eras of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. At the end of each era, we hold our final matches to determine the true champion, then reset the points and do it all over again. Between games, we ban cards and pull extra packs, constantly upgrading and updating our strategies to stay on top of an always shifting metagame. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Double Progression Trouble! Hello world and all who inhabit it, my name is Jessica J, aka Jesse J Plays. I am joined by my co-host Sophie apparently. Welcome to Double Progression Trouble. Today, we will be taking two steps further into the ever more complex history of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Two small steps for woman, one giant leap for jank. And that is the last time I will ever say that. Folks, no. we are getting towards the end. It's oh coming. Oh my god, it's so close. It's so close. It's so close that we're technically past the point of sevens, which would normally be like... Uh, trigger the end of the season for us. Normally, it would be over after we did um, Age of Cyber Dick and mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. other one, whatever the last, the, whatever the last two were. But um, we persist in part because there weren't any huge shifts in the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game as it was played in the TCG at this point in time for one thing there wasn't a new uh, extra deck or new summoning mechanic introduced which is what happened for the sevens era but a bigger deal is that there wasn't a new master rule and truly there didn't need to be because master rule five is the one true master rule it is the best balancing of all the different mechanics do not fucking at me um so in a way it is comforting that they didn't introduce any new mechanics and just rest on on their laurels of what is honestly a pretty interesting metagame when they let it be. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's strange to be here. Um, after opening today's packs, we will be one pack behind current TCG. We are functionally there. We're at the point where I need to think slightly harder about what cards do, because I haven't been playing IRL lately. I've only been playing Master Door, and we've hit the point where a lot of these cards are not in Master Door yet. Ooh. It's a strange place to be. Yes, it is a strange place to be, um, but it's a place we're going to be in today, and that place that we're going to be is uh, Duelist mm -hmm. Nexus and Age of Overlord. What mm -hmm. are in these sets, you might ask, and uh, how will they affect the format in this post pope format? Well, uh, it's kind of a funny story that was phrased maybe the best of anything that has ever been phrased, and it goes something yeah. like this. Duelist Nexus was the first uh, post sevens lore set, uh, so kind of a nether realm of the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. But uh, there is interesting stuff going on here. We've got some Unchained support, which will probably work pretty well with Sophie's pool. She has a very solid Unchained uh, uh, pool, especially in her Link monsters. We've got the introduction of the Illusion archetype. We've got some uh, Infernoble support and uh, various other shit going on. We don't have any rerolls at this stage, so what you see is what you get. 24 packs of Duelist Nexus, let's jump in. It's time for yet another DPT, and it's the penultimate one. This is the second to last episode, the last time where we have two packs to open. This is 
It's just crazy we've made it this far. I can't believe we're here. And let's see if we can actually manage to win this fucking season before the end. I have fucking thrown such a goddamn lead. And I'm hoping to get it back, starting with Duelist Nexus. This card has a lot of 5Ds legacy support. And you know me, I love 5Ds. And I believe in this to give me the power to pull Broken. Ah, uh, that is gonna be an ultra right off the bat. Info Noble Arms Almace. Um, I've never read an Info Noble, and I'm really hoping not to start now, but we might have to. Uh, Grenosaurus Giga Cannon is a semi generic rank 4 for playing dinosaurs, I guess. And Greed Jaw, um, is funny. Okay, Chimera Fusion is actually kind of cool. So the big thing that came out here is the Illusion type and the Chimera archetype. We do need to get pretty lucky because a lot of them are supers, but I would love to play some kind of Despia Chimera build. That would be really cool. And that's a good start. Chimera the King of Phantom Beasts is, I believe, the most important fusion. Yeah, this is a hand rip um, that then quick effect summons a guy. That is not bad at all. That is not remotely bad. Also, shout out to Multi Century Ice Prison Man. My poor girl, Adrienne. She's so sad. Give this girl some friends in season two. Yo! <laughs> I mean, the 5D's blessing coming through. That is a cosmic quasar dragon. No idea how we ever make this, but God knows I will try to figure it out. Um, that's also an unchanged sword of Shayama, so this is really important. One unchained card has been banned, um, and it is a good one, but these unchained souls allow us to actually go into the unchained extra deck monsters, which is pretty crazy. So I'm really hoping we can find enough of these um, to do something with. They're the king of mythical claws. I mean, that's really, really good. We're doing pretty well in terms of Chimera stuff. Uh, Veda Kalanta, very funny for uh, one of every Vsauce deck that we're cooking up. Who the fuck is this card? Man, I actually don't know this. We're actually getting into a time where I don't know all of the cards anymore. Because I haven't really been playing IRL, I'm generally only playing Master Duel nowadays. So I actually don't know the cards that well, that aren't in Master Duel yet. It's a, it's a strange place to be for your girl. Uh, they're the big winged ball for that. We're, getting, we're doing pretty well. We are doing pretty damn well. Um, I don't know exactly what the deck entails, but I'm pretty sure we're doing a good job of it, and, uh... <laughs> uh, Tistina cards are not what we want to see. This is one of the worst decks ever printed. Like, it just came out in Master Duel, and I think it's so bad, I don't even want to try it. And I say that as someone who loves War Rock. Yo, with that Magnum the Reliever, I'm really getting relieved right now. Red Eyes Support, Pog. Um, and I think this might be one of the actually good ones, as opposed to all the garbage that I support in the universe. And yo, is that an auto Geist? God, there's just no chance I can play Geist, but I really want to try. I love this deck. Aw, oh, hello, friend. Uh, he does a fire charm or, or channel, or rather, isn't terrible. It's kind of a social for any fire, so I guess we take that. Ah, uh, second buff from that. Very nice. This is a really good card. We want multiple of it. Um... And unfortunately, a Makongo, I don't think, will be very good. Oh, uh, but hey, it's a woman, and we can always suspect woman. Okay, Mural Sword Knight. That is huge. This is a starter, and I think this one is also the negate. Yeah, 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 this one's really important. Um, I think now we might actually have enough to play some kind of Chimera engine, which is pretty cool. And there you go, a second one. We are doing really excellent in the Chimera way of things. Yo, with that Magician of Faithfulness, um, incredibly funny. Insanely funny card. Also unplayable. We got a door. I apologize to honestly anyone for that pronunciation, but you know, there he is. Again, don't know anything about this deck. Really don't want to figure it out. So that's where we are. Well, I guess the pack opener wants me to figure it out, because that's an Angelica. I know this card is really good. Uh, but god, I don't want to read it. I just don't want to. Second Chimera Fusion in the second to last pack, that is very nice. Um, I'm really happy with these pulls. Honestly, the only thing that would make me happier is if this last pack contains either a good Chimera card or a Crimson Dragon. I will fucking throw every remaining week to play Crimson Dragon, but we will not get it yet. That is completely fine. We got three of the Unchained commons. We got... Wait, did we get three? What's the other guy? Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of the Unchained Commons, really good illusion pulls, 
toss that baby into the collection and let's move on. Yeah, it's like a, a dreaming card. Um, I mean, I don't know if we have a spellcaster deck that also summons level 8s. Uh, hit me up with a uh, level 7 Xyz and then we'll talk. Oh, hold on. Yeah, the problem is we definitely don't have enough Altergeist monsters. We have a couple. We even have a few high rarity ones like the Meluseek. Uh, but I don't imagine... Oh, this is going to be... Oh, and this is a Link 4 too, so that's a little bit weird. Neat Ultra Rare. Yes! Illusion Monster! Um, oh, and it's pretty generic as far as fusions go. Yeah, I, uh, this is a neat little card. Um, it would be very funny to be able to run the illusion cards. I don't think we're going to be able to, but... Um, but that is, um, putting us on a pretty good path. Let's actually take a look. I think we might even have Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast. I don't know if it matters in, like, the new support, but... No, we actually did not get Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast. I thought I saw it in our pool, but I guess I was gaslighting myself. Big Winged Burfamet. We're actually getting a lot of illusion, guys. Oh, this is a fiend, but this is, like, it's Burfamet. It's, like, part of the illusion, guys. Very funny. Another level 2 Xyz. I don't think we have enough pearly support uh, to make that real. Chimera Fusion. We're actually getting a lot of Chimera related stuff. Ooh, this is a pretty good card. Um, in certain decks, we will definitely play this. Ooh, Magician of Faithfulness. Cute little uh, Magician of Faith retrain. Um, being level 5 is kind of stupid though, so... Another altar, guys. Banishing trap hole. Oh, interesting. This is a, um, can actually be a pretty good way of fucking over one of Sophie's starters. Um, that's very interesting. Interesting. I don't think we're doing monarch shenanigans at this stage. Another magician of faithfulness. You're finished. This is very specific. Um, I don't think that that card is very good in the modern era. All right, last pack of Duelist Nexus. Um, sure. Interesting stuff going on as far as the Chimera cards go. The Banishing Trap Hole is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, we'll throw this into the collection and let's do Age of Overlord. Next up, Age of Overlord, one of the most impactful sets in recent memory. The high end in this set is unbelievable. If there is any set to get crazy secret rare luck, it is this one. Let's see if we can do it. Not much happening right off the bat. Um, Gen and his boyfriend Ken are, of course, extremely funny. Um, the Supreme King Pendulum support could be good, but mainly for Jess because she has Electromite. Um, and shout out to this gay bug. Yo, is that Watt support? Let's fucking go, dude. I'll play the hell out of Watts. Wait, is that Lila Rap? Uh, if you guys give Jess $10 billion, I'll perform the Lila Rap on stream. And that's a promise. Um, nothing too crazy so far. That is our first forest card, which is pretty nice. These guys are a really strong engine, but obviously we have to find a king sarcophagus in order for it to be literally playable at all. Um, getting some sinful spoils, um, which is fun, which is cool, not particularly good unless we get obscenely lucky. Um, Tarai is here, that's cool. And I think Tao the Chanter is like an okay illusion support card. Yeah, we might play this if we play Chimera. A poissonnier de novelles. Uh, regret it be unplayable because it is the only novel card in the set, but you know, it's cool. And there's our first Snake Eye, Snake Eye Oak. It would be nice to put a few of these, um, because we could potentially play it, um, after our next set when we get popular, but we would have to get quite lucky. Okay, um, so we are now a third of the way through. We have not found anything above a super, um, and this is a set I am willing to reroll in an attempt to high roll. I think I have one reroll left for the season. Um, uh, there's another Horus, um, which is fine, but not, like, good, unfortunately. Um, Xyz Armor Fortress is nice, though. We would like to get one of every Xyz Armor card. Those guys do form a pretty, um, proficient engine. 
that I would like to have access to, and finally our first secret ended. It's not a good one, folks. TG Limiter Remover is good for that deck. That deck is not good. Was really hoping for something better. Yo, it's Taint of the Tissina. Uh, don't show me that. I don't want to see it. Our Divine Temple of Snake Eye is decent, but again, we really don't have enough of them in order to play it. We're finally pulling high rarity stuff, but none of it is the ones we want, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, Snash is the good one, but with only one, I mean, what does that accomplish? Yeah, I'm going through these pretty fast, because I really do want to reroll it. Our Bofamet is not bad, actually. Like, this, I'm pretty sure this card is good. Yeah, this isn't bad at all. Um, so that goes in the Chimera package, at least. Um, yo, is that Veda, Kala, Kuda, Ka, 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 Torpedo, okay. So we have gotten one of each of those. But yeah. GG, Mighty Cycle. Yeah, I think we have to reroll that. There is just nothing remotely good in here. Um, I mean, it's really funny we poured this. Um, it's also bad. Yeah, let me just take a quick look here. Make sure that I do want to reroll, because I think we almost certainly do. Age of Overlord is a set that I uh, purchased like two months ago at a card uh, store down the street. This set's actually pretty hard to pull well in because all the best cards are high rarity. Of course, SP Little Knight is here. There's TG support. Um, some more, uh, mythical beast stuff, which is kind of interesting because our chimera, uh, mythical beast, whatever pulls, uh, from the last set were pretty decent. Uh, but otherwise, not sure we're gonna find anything super exciting here. That's okay, though, because, uh, this is a week where we do have a lot of pretty strong, um, decks in our back pocket, and we can... Uh, we do have the ability to kind of rest on our laurels, even if we're not finding anything too terribly crazy here. So, let's see what Age of Overlord has to offer. Yeah, TG Mighty Striker. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work super well for us level-wise. Oh my god, why is it- why- why is this one so fucking hard to summon? Yeah, unfortunately, no way. And even, like, it's so difficult to play a card like this that is so hard to summon when there are still two kaijus in the format. Is It is an unsearchable two of, but it's still a consideration. Burning Dragon. Embrace of Tistina. Ooh, Snake Eye. I know this archetype. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, uh, play anything particularly crazy. I don't really have um, 130 DPT bucks to get a bonfire, uh, but it's neat. Although I guess this card can uh, have some applications, depending on if we're um, building certain decks. Ooh, interesting. Uh, questionable. Um, I don't know. <laughs> 100% of me thought for a millisecond that this motherfucker was called Snake Eye Bitch. <laughs> anyway, that's the second, uh, uh, Snake Eye card, and indeed is a target for the effect of the first Snake Eye card. We'll see if this archetype comes to anything. Vanquish Soul, Soul Zhao Long. I don't think I've been seeing a lot of Vanquish Soul cards is the problem. Snake Eye Ash. We keep getting Snake Eye Super Rares. That's kind of interesting. I still am uh, doubtful that we'll find enough, but... Um, we found an interesting Supreme King adjacent card earlier, but... <sighs> Oh god, a fusion pendulum. No! Oh! Okay. All right. Uh that uh changes things. That things are different. Uh than they were at pack 15. As of pack 16, things are 
uh, have changed. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, okay, okay, all right. Uh, I think this is a fully my... No, 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 there was a different card. Ooh, a Labyrinth card. Um, Silver Castle got banned, um, but... We do still have the Ultra Rare Labyrinth Trap, so if this card is remotely good, it might matter. This card isn't bad. Um, again, it would be better if we still had Silver Castle, but um, eh, it might come up. We'll see. <laughs> the playset of Seed uh, Spitting Saplings. I think that's our fourth um, sn uh, sn super rare Snake Eye name. This is getting... Our Snake Eye pool is getting uh, dangerously close to being interesting. Another one of that guy. Okay, last pack of Age of Overlord. Can we go for two SP Little Knights? Can we get that Emperor Stove Luck? No. Well, I can't complain about that too much. Uh, SP Little Knight is a crazy, crazy powerful card. Uh, really, uh, really insane pull. Uh, we will add this to the collection and see what we're building. Yup. Can confirm, I will be using my third and final reroll on Age of Overlord. Give me that SP Little Knight, baby. We will simply high roll. Ah, uh, well, I mean, a secret in the first pack is better vibe than we got last time. Um, again, we really do need um the, the sarcophagus, um, so we can do anything with that deck. But you know, mm hmm. Rewarded. Rewarded. Fucking rewarded. More rewarded than anyone has ever been. Jesus fucking Christ, Christ. The lesbians want Sophie to regain her lead. Holy fuck, we just win the game. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, just pulled IP, Sophie pulled SP, fails fail, right? Surely those cards are the exact same power level. I don't even care if we pull fucking nothing in the rest of this set. We got the good one. Uh, Xiao Long is pretty much useless, it's the only Vanquished Soul we have, but, you know, who cares? Um, so I've been going through these pretty fast, we haven't found anything too interesting. Odd Eye's Octray Dragon is incredibly funny, um, but also really doesn't do anything. Um, so we're probably not doing much with that. And we even get back the buff on that, that is very nice, that was the one thing we really wanted back. Yeah, at this point, the remaining 8 packs legitimately don't matter. Um, we got Taint again. That's epic. That's just what I wanted. You know, we're chilling. We're opening packs. I don't really care what's in the packs, but we sure are opening them. For sure, 100%. We're getting some more Horus. Um, Embrace. I don't think we aren't gonna get the Exceed Armor stuff, but I'm not super beat up about it. We did need one more high rarity card in order to actually do the combo. Can we find anything in the last pack? Um, not really... But I am not too beat up about it. Folks, we have an SP Little Knight. We have a Chimera and Unchained Engine. Let's see if we can mix them all together and brew up something unbeatable. <laughs> It's another ritual deck and a really, really fascinating one at that. This is Shino Birds. Now, I wouldn't call this deck simple insofar as I don't think I would call any deck at this point in seven simple, but its strategy is fairly straightforward. We are trying to set up the trap card known as Stars Align Across the Milky Way, which is searchable by the field spell, which is searchable by a monster, etc, etc. And what this trap does is essentially if you have the right ingredients in play, you can quick effect Ritual Summon a monster during your opponent's turn, and those monsters can include Shino Baron Peacock, which compulsory evacuation devices sends back to hand three of your opponent's monsters on summon, or Shino Baron S, which sends three of your opponent's spell or trap cards back to deck on summon, and then immediately summons another guy from deck. Fundamentally, this deck is all about getting that really powerful form of disruption into play, and then summoning Dogmatica Albazoa. Now, this card is really good, 
but it does lose to a lot of basic spell and trap card removal we have at this point. So it's not always as big of a threat by itself as you would like, but when you combine it with the Shino Bird loop to interrupt all your opponent's attempts at removal, then it actually becomes truly frightening. Here, right on the cusp of just being caught up to present day Yu-Gi-Oh, we have a ton of ritual support. 10 incantations, 3 Manju, 3 Sonic Bird, 2 Pre-Prep, so 18 non-archetypal cards that just fundamentally further the deck's strategy, and then besides the two Dogmatica cards, every other card in the deck is basically a Shunu Bird card. Artama is, has an effect that adds a spirit monster to deck, which adds any of the Shino Bird ritual monsters. The ritual spell Shino Bird's Calling is pretty solid because it lets you banish them from graveyard, which lets you get further strategy. Shino Bird Power Spot is an important advantage card. Arguably, though, the star of the show is Stars Align Above the Shrine. This card gets you your trap card, and it's how you keep cards in rotation that you need for your combos to work. And then if you get to turn three you typically have a hand of like seven or eight cards because you've just produced so much out of this field spell the extra was not the most high priority because of the way the incantations work sometimes we will have to win the game without getting into the extra deck what we do have is hot red dragon arching king calamity because of the way albazoa's ritual spell works one vespinado one ikura class one pendrin saction which has absolutely unhinged synergy with albazoa and then just a smattering of good link monsters we still have barricade borg blocker dynamonda is an actual ritual related link monster we would like to summon this but it may not come up transverser link mail two Raten, two reproducus one sp little knight uh <laughs> you know steel star regulator and win the wind charmer verdant the side deck is Red Potan, one Lava Golem, and three Thunder King, the Lightning Strike Hydro. I think 100% these cards will be going in whenever we're going second. Just really good synergy with the deck. Three Raging Storm Dragon Beaufort, in case we need more interruption. Twister and Paleozoic Olenoides. I keep thinking about cutting this, but then I keep regretting it. There are still just cards that uh, are better just popped upon activation that are like insinuous cards and stuff. One more Stars Aligned across the Milky Way and three of the Transmigration Prophecy. Let's see how we do. Well, give me a big white hat and call me Gordon Ramsay because I was cooking for this one. Folks, we are playing a classic Yu-Gi-Oh deck. I am, of course, talking about Unchained Chimera Plunder Patrol. Now, at first glance, you may be like, Sophie, what the fuck are you doing? Do you need help? And the answer to that question is yes, but not with this. I know what I'm doing with this. So, the main synergy between these three strategies is they are all fiend-based. Now, you might say, Sophie, isn't Chimera an illusion deck? And the answer is kind of. There is some illusion support, but the primary fusion we want to make, the King of Phantom Beasts, requires any beast plus any fiend. Drawing any one of our Chimera starters gets us into our beast, and then we have a ton of monsters in the deck we can fuse with that to get into the Chimera engine. That has additional synergy with the Unchained stuff, because the other Chimera fusion can send any fiend from deck to graveyard, including something like an Unchained Soul of Shyama or Shalvara to get us into the Unchained engine. If we don't draw that, the Unchained cards can summon themselves by destroying any fiend on the field, including any of the Plunder Patrols, which are also fiends. This deck is really sick. Its lines vary a ton depending on what your opening hand looks like, and the end boards are really powerful. If we get the Chimera line, we get a big old boss monster with kind of two negates and a ton of follow-up. If we get the Unchained stuff, we can get into an Unchained Soul of Rage that can tag into SP for functionally three disruptions, and even if all we find is Plunders, we can still end on something like a Groza Tyrant of Thunder, which is a monster negate with protection. Pretty cool deck, gonna be a ton of fun to play, I am so excited. We're playing pretty much the whole Illusion package, not playing the second Bulphomet or Chimera Fusion, because we can only do the line once, given what we have for the extra deck, so no reason to play more Bricks. We're playing pretty much all the Unchained stuff as well, cut one copy of Shiyama because we don't really want to draw it. And then we got some funny text. Diabolica is a fantastic send off the fusion that gets you a bunch of value. And hilariously, Dino Wrestler Koela, Koela Seelot, is that how you say that? Is the best way we have to make a level 8 synchro alongside one of the Unchained Souls as another way to get into Groza. 
In the extra deck, we just have some good stuff, a couple Chimera Fusions, a few Synchros we can potentially make, a few Xyz, and our Lynx, which are the most important ones. The side is pretty much what you expect, it's Bestials, it's Kaijus and Parasomnia for going second, and it is the Twister. I am so excited for this deck, I think this pile of weird little synergies is so cool, and God, I hope I know what I'm doing enough to not accidentally cheat. There's like three Xeno locks you have to be managing. So hopefully I won't fuck it up. Apologies if I do. Let's jump into it and get carried by this lesbian, shall we? Welcome back, YouTube! Well, Sophie just said Cyber Dick Impact, and I'm not going to be thinking about anything else all day. So all I will say about my deck is that I got to name it in Dueling Book DPT 77, and I really enjoyed that. How are you feeling, Sophie? No, listen, I, I cooked for this one, alright? This all is right. maybe, I think... Just like in terms of deck building, the coolest deck I've made this season, like, Ooh. I think I mentioned this last week when I was building it, it is, it's gonna be an interesting one, it's gonna depend, like, all the lines are pretty good, but it'll depend on what I draw, um, and I, I hope I don't accidentally cheat, because I have, like, three Xeno locks to manage here, so here we are. Okay, <laughs> that is fascinating to hear, as concerning, and... Um, at least we're gonna... I mean, it's less concerning if I can't win a fucking RPS. Oh, now you know, now what you know how it man? feels. What the All fuck right. is happening? We're going first. No surprises here. 40-15 across the board. Classic um, stuff. Okay, I don't mind hmm, this, man. This is interesting, but it might also be awkward. I need to think. Um... <sighs> Hate that for you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't think we go all the way. This deck has um three modes. It doesn't do it, it does it, or it does it plus. And I don't think we're going to get to plus with this hand, but I think this hand does do it. Um, I am going to start by revealing uh, Incantation Pencil Plume. Yeah, we are virtual summoning, baby. Let's fucking go. And I am going to... The card I'm going to be revealing, uh, Sophie, is mm. Shino Baroness Shade Peacock. No fucking shot. Let's go. And I am going to be special summoning oh. Impcantation Candle, and then the Pencil Plume's coming down. Now, I will admit this. Pencil Plume is the worst fucking card in this deck. The fact that it's level 3... Makes yep. everything so yep. hard, but <laughs> yep. um, this is still a pretty good situation to be in because we're going to add from deck to hand, um, Shino Birds Calling. We go, uh, Shino Birds Calling, pitching yeah. the candle to special summon Shade Peacock. There she is. She's throwing shade. We're going to declare the throwing shade lady to add from deck to hand a card that mentions spirit monsters. In this case, stars align above the shrine. I am going to activate. Oh, wait, this card is nuts. What the fuck? Activate stars align a bunch <laughs> above the shrine, and we're going to um, conduct a ritual summon. Yeah. We're going to... Ritual summon from the deck. Um... <laughs> Which I guess you can print on a card that supports spirit monsters. Yeah, yeah, that's... we're. It's gonna be interesting how this all works out. Mm -hmm. But, um, we're gonna special summon Shino Baron Shade Peacock. Yeah. Declare the effect, tribute it, add one ritual monster... Oh. And one spell card from deck to hand. Oh, I see what you're supposed to do with these. Oh, this is so cute. This is a I I this cute little deck. I wish I was dead put me onto this. It is a really cute little deck. Um I am going to add from deck to hand uh Shino Bird's Calling. And you know what? At this point, um let's get uh Shino Baroness Peacock into rotation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to activate Calling. We are going to banish two Shinos from the graveyard, Shinobs, yeah. in order to 
summon uh, Shino Baroness Peacock. Peacock? We're going to go to the end phase. Um, Peacock's going to come back to hand, and we will declare the field spell. Yeah. We're going to set... Um, I, I wish now. Oh, um, I wish I was dead. Um, I um tested this out in TCG and um, not TCG. I tested this out in Edo Pro, and what I found is that if I'm not ban uh bouncing a card with Baroness Peacock's effect, I cannot use its effect to summon from deck. Yeah, yeah, because the second pot's optional, the first pot's not. Yes. So um. That that is the reason that uh, we don't have that option. Um, but uh, we're setting stars ac a line across the Milky Way. Um, oh, and you get some tokens. And I do get some tokens. <laughs> a lot of the time I forget about the tokens, but they're pretty important yeah. um, to not like uh, to have as future things. Yeah. And uh, we'll draw. Go to standby. And now I am going to summon. <laughs> Um, two cards from my banished zone. I will activate stars align across the Milky Way. Reveal Baroness. Oh, I see. This quick rituals functionally. Add Shino Baron. And yes, um, the downside of the strategy oh is that <laughs> everything is out in the open. You know exactly what my strategy is. But the yeah. gist of it is that I banish stars align across the Milky Way and quick effect fusion summon one monster. It's either Shino Baroness, which sends three of your back row to deck, or Shino Baron, which compulses three of your, your monsters. So that is the fundamental strategy. Yeah. Both of which are pretty good. Alright, this deck is really sick. Um, as a spirit monster lover, I'm uh, very happy to be playing against this. I think this is gonna be a nifty little match. Um, so I have definitely not drawn bad here. It's not gonna get me into everything, but it's gonna get me to a lot, and hopefully it'll be enough to beat, um, fucking Compo 3. Alright, step one. Jess, I want to activate the magic card, Abomination's Prison. <sighs> I thought we might be here, folks. Sophie's Unchained Pulls in the Brains era were very, very good, save for one fatal flaw. <laughs> I have once again been released from my chains. <laughs> um, and read nothing into the fact that I will be adding from my deck to my hand, um, Unchained Twins of Ruha. Okay, yeah, Sarama's the one that is banned, but we arguably could have stood to ban more of this. Um, and then, let's see. Let me just make sure that... Uh, so now I have to think about how to do this in an order that doesn't get absolutely fucked by Shino Baron. Um, I... I think it always starts with this. I'm gonna set one. Yeah. I will go... Effect of a Ruha targeting the set. Yeah, you got it. So that's gonna special a Ruha, it's gonna pop the set, which is the second Abomination's Prison. Um, I'll Incredible. trigger it the back. Incredible. Just summon from deck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we are gonna grab. Remember when cards that say just summon any card in your archetype from your deck were like less common? <laughs> Ah, uh, what days those were. Oh boy. I'm gonna summon my new friend, Unchained Soul of Shyama. Oh boy. Now, I do notice that you haven't normal summoned yet, which may or may I, not be part of the part of the plan. I indeed have not normal summoned. Um, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I'm no, to this, this point. You're, you're good so far. You're trying to think, because the issue is I can do some stuff. But given, like, how many monsters you have, I can't do it in a way that, clean, that cleanly forces the Shino. I guess I kind of can. Um, the tokens are 15 15s, right? Uh, yeah, let me double check this. Um, yeah! Oh, but actually, I can't do that line because I am fiend locked under a Ruha. Okay. The first of the three Xeno locks. Um. Oh, that is what you meant by Xeno locks. When you said I'm managing three different locks, I thought you meant like, like floodgates for my deck. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no. okay, okay. <laughs> um, 
I was I... terrified. Like, what in, in the <laughs> mystic mind fuck is she gonna put me through? I'm trying to think the order we want to do this. God, they should remove quick effects from Yu-Gi-Oh, actually. <laughs> this is too hard. Um, we can do that. That forces it out. Kind of sucks shit, though. No, I think we do just go for this. I will activate Unchained Soul of Shalvara, targeting Aruha. Um... To destroy it and special summon the Shalvara. Yeah, sure. Alright, so I'll park Aruha with special Shalvara. Um, I will trigger Aruha. Um, yeah. And we will special summon a Rakea. Yes. Okay, we're we'll being allowed to get to this point. So, I guess my the next question is, how much does it do if I just threaten battle? If I threaten battle, I can clear the tokens. But I can't clear a third monster, which means I can't threaten to remove enough material. You can't Baron. And I think, unfortunately, with this, I don't... Well, hold up. I guess that gives us some extension. Alright. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what I'm doing next, Jess. And what I'm doing next. Yo ho, motherfucking ho. I Lundo knew it! Patrol I Shipyard. knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew you wouldn't be a motherfucking fiend deck. I knew you wouldn't be able to, to deny it. Listen, I have a second target now. That's all I need, baby. <laughs> you fucking do, motherfucker. To pay out to get who your says, booty plundered. Who says? Who says our flag means death got cancelled? Season three's right here, baby. Goddamn right it is. I wear a shipyard effect. I'm um, pitching Diabolica, the Dragonic General, to start a plunder. All right. I've never seen this card before in my life. Uh, it's yeah, it's important. pretty pretty. It's a it's a hot Yu-Gi-Oh card. It is. Yeah, the important part right now is that a fiend I control goes to grave by card effect. I can summon her from grave. Okay. Um, and we are gonna grab... Whitebeard, the Plunder Patrol Helm! You got it. <laughs> okay, okay. We've got- we're getting somewhere. We are absolutely getting somewhere. Um, actually, we kind of can threaten enough. Right, because I can just crash one into the Shade Peacock, I suppose. And I'm pretty fine with doing that. Um, because this... Oh yeah, this is not main phase only, it can be used in battle. That is fine. I will enter the battle phase. Sure. And we are gonna go... Oh, I'm actually very dumb, but that's okay. I am gonna go... Yeah, Shiyama into a token. Now, I'm... Board. Yeah, now I'm gonna think I'm stupid and I can't actually clear one of the tokens with Rakea, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm not concerned about that. <laughs> For sure. This question is, is there any utility to ramming into the peacock here? If you, if no. you want uh, my opinion, I think you should take out the pencil plume. I think it's really, really dangerous. I mean, uh, I will be cutting the pencil plume because that's the only one Rakea can hit over. Oh, uh, but first we're clearing the second token. Sure. Um, we'll clear, we will clear the pen supply, I, I, you know, it's gonna happen. Alright. Alright, uh, main two. Yeah. I will trigger, uh, Shiyama, target a card I control and a spell trap on this field and destroy them. I'm gonna target my Rakea and the star of the line. Okay, what does Rakea do? Um, it floats. All these fuckouts float. <laughs> they all float down here. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is fine. Okay, um, we will, actually it's not even done, but it's probably fine. I'll go Chain Link 1 Rakea, Chain Link 2 Diabolica. Sure. So that's gonna summon this, and it's gonna go Rakea for, I think at this point we'll just get out the second Hiyama, don't really want to draw this one. Okay, oh yeah, I still haven't normal summoned yet. I still have that going for me. Okay, yeah, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. I'm gonna link three. Um, we are gonna go for a card I finally get to summon. The Unchained Soul of Anguish. Yeah. Um, and because it went to grave, I will trigger Shalvara effect to set an Unchained Spell Trap from deck. Yeah. Um... I think I really want to get escape. I think we just have to get the one that special summons. 
Um, anything on resolution? No, because then you can activate this effect to link with one of my monsters, and that forces it out. Um, and I will do that. <laughs> and I will do that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Alright, so, um, this calling goes to Graveyard. Um, Targeting Peacock. Well, I guess Baron, not Baroness, I should say. They're yeah, both yeah. Peacock. Um, and we will tribute Baron and Peacock in order to summon Shino, Baron, Peacock, and compulse both your monsters. Yeah, you surely will. Alright, goodbye, friends. And just for lulz, we will summon this Peacock. Um, oh yeah, that, that really does summon a guy from hand. That bitch can summon rituals. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Okay, so... Oh my god, that's hilarious. Wow. That's like a lot of stuff. Um, I will activate Effect of Shiyama and Grave. So target a Fiend or a Face Down, destroy it, and Special Summon it. Um, and I'll target the set Abominable Chamber. Oh my fucking god, you got it. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll top this. We'll go Shiyama. Trigger Chamber. You got it. Now we are, it's gotta be said, running a wee bit low on Unchained in the deck. <laughs> um... But, you know, we got a Rakea. And then, I will normal summon Plunder Pat Whitebeard, the Plunder Patrol Helm. Alrighty. Okay, I'll link these off. Um, Shayama goes to bottom of deck. Um, and we will summon the good one. Unchained Soul of Rage. Yeah, you got it. Um, and I'll trigger Whitebeard to summon a Plunder from deck. Yeah. <laughs> Locking me into Plunder Patrols, um, so that's, you know, that's two out of three locks we got in this fucker. Um, we're just gonna get Gordon here. Yeah. Um, and I will set one and proceed to end phase. Alright, um, these guys go back to hand, which would be really good if the field spell were online. Yeah. We will go two tokens. Alright, not a ton of disruption here, but Soul of Rage is a quick effect linked with your guy during the main phase, which is cool. Yeah. And the tiny problem is uh, whether or not we have any extension at this moment in time. Um... Ah. You know what? This, this, is, this is the ritual deck experience. It's sitting on five <laughs> cards in hand and being like, what the fuck do I do? Oh, dear. <laughs> um... Things have, uh, things were looking quite good last turn. Um, now it is a bit more questionable. Yeah, this is a little bit devastating. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I, um, I, I guess end of May now. Well, actually, I'm not even doing that. What if you have... No, I'm not doing shit. You can't make me. <laughs> um, stand by. This deck has one lock. <laughs> and usually... Usually we do need the field spell. Yeah. Unfor yeah. Unfortunately, you know, this deck has to deal with the biggest lock of all, which is um the ritual mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, boy. A uh, little unfortunate. Ah. Uh, these things I, mean, I guess we can kind of do whatever, right? <laughs> uh, what am I doing here? There's gotta be a lethal line. What are you talking about? I think it's impossible. <laughs> Surely there's a 0% chance I can't kill from this position, right? <laughs> um, To start off with, why don't we go shipyard pitch uh, Shiyama? Mm. Very true. Um, You know, we can get some more pirates. Big fan of those. Um, oh, I think getting black. This one's probably the funniest, but is it the best? Eh, whatever, I'm not thinking. I'm Adam Black Eyes, the Plendor Patrol fucking bard. And I will go, um, you know, effect of Chiyama in Grave. I... what am I even making here? Yeah, we're gonna go Chiyama in Grave, I'll just target the Rakea. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna go whoop, we're gonna go boop. Uh, we're gonna go Badoop. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go Bloop. 
<laughs> you're uh, you're blooping. I got it. Must be said that you are hard blooping. I'm blooping, blooping, and if this time takes too long, I'm gonna start pooping. Um, <laughs> True. Um. Oh, you better you better uh fucking watch out for my troll and lockbird. Yeah. It is a little unfortunate. I don't actually have anything good to link into off of the link three here. Jesse um, smells chat. Don't tell do her that. I said this. I won't tell anyone stuff. I won't tell anyone. That's so kind. Wow. I'm really good <laughs> at holding on to people's secrets with them. Um, right, right. Hey, Stove, can um... you look at Sophie's hand? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just look through the computer. <laughs> so. No, I, think, I think the idea that knowing any of your hidden cards right now would be the thing that helps me in this situation, <laughs> looking at this hey. hand. Listen, you never know. Um, because this does... Oh no, that one doesn't, doesn't do what I want it to do. Mmm. How very mildly annoying, but also not that annoying. Um... Yeah, so we just want to get that back, probably, to like do that. God, we might just be summoning some fucking guys. I'm gonna be so real with you. I mean, like, that's kind of the Unchained experience, right? Just, yeah. uh, we can summon all the guys until all the guys come home and we're out of guys. But you just got a lot of new yeah. guys. Yeah, no, uh, I'm in one of the shockingly large number of places I've been in this series. <laughs> I have that does stuff, but not when my opponent only controls normal monsters. <laughs> um... <laughs> I will activate Black Eyes the Plunder Patrol Sea Guide, targeting um, White Beard and Grave to special Black Eyes and add back White Beard. Oh, good idea. That good, good plan. I believe in you. I'm doing it. Uh, there he is. And <gasps> wait, I can do this. Oh, that's gotta be good. It's gotta be. It simply has to be. Um. Yeah, that act that doesn't do. <laughs> no, no, it actually does. It's actually fine. I will synchro summon with level four golden hair and the level four black eyes. There's the thing about listening to Sophie figure out her plays <laughs> is that there's no middle ground. It's either this this does everything. No way. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, all I know is drama. It's just. <laughs> I'm gonna think about summon the Plunder Patrol ship Lord. New fucking oh, ship. New ship that's actually a wagon. It really is. So if you special summon a monster, you bet your ass I'm adding a Plunder Patrol card from my deck to my hand. You got it. Um, you got it. And then I will normal summon White Beard the Plunder Patrol Helm. You fucking got it. Um, and we're just gonna do some good old violence. You know, I love violence. We all love violence. Um, it's what we're here to do. We- This is the number one thing that this show is about, is violence. So it's 2000 and then and 15. 15. Right. Um, I'll set one. And, uh, you know? <laughs> you know? Hmm? Hmm. Pre-preparation of rights? I mean, that's, that's like a pretty good call that I've heard. That one's it's, like, okay. It's all right. It is all right. We will add, um, do I have any ritual spells left in deck? Oh, no. Uh, Jeff, no. I, uh, no. <laughs> I, uh... Um, if I have a ritual spell... It's an and, right? So I can't activate it if I have a spell but not a monster? Um, that's correct. It has to do both. Okay. And for some reason, these little fuckers don't count as, um, like, the, the correct name in the graveyard. Why don't they? <laughs> Alright, um... No, no, the thing, the thing is, preparation can't add from the graveyard to the hand. It, it, can, add, it can add the monster from grave to hand, it can't add the spell from oh, grave to oh, hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, well, you know. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, that didn't go as exactly as I would have hoped. 
<laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. I still believe. You indeed. I still believe in these birds, although my belief is very <laughs> fragile. <laughs> we'll be back, Aww. folks. All right. Well, sometimes ritual decks are like that. Two more packs of Age of Overlord. Um, a Tistina Ultra Rare that rules, and a Visa Samsara. Uh, sure. Game two. All right. The Unchains do it again, and they are gonna get us a bit of extra Duelist Nexus. Just a bit it more in here that we would like than the other one. A third Cornfield Quaddle. Pretty big, actually. Um, we can bring that in with one of our Potan. Uh, nothing too good in this one. Unfortunate. Um, Monadium I don't particularly care about, and anything in the last one... No, no there is not, but that's fine. One playable card is more than we usually get out of this, honestly. Let's go toss that in and see if we can't draw into those illusions in game two. Alright, so the cool thing is it just won't happen that way this time. It simply will mm -hmm. not happen. I will say, your deck is quite good. It did just, you did beat Compulse 3. Like, I'm not going to <laughs> deny that that is a thing that happened. Um, but I am going to be going first. Seems reasonable. Um, oh. And this <laughs> oh, might be... Oh, that is a bizarre opener. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty good one, I think. Mm. Um, yeah. So it puts us in a pretty good mm. position, I believe. Yeah, no, this is fine. <laughs> Sorry. I am going to activate stars align across the shrine. Across the shrine? We are going to declare the effect of candle. We're going to reveal calling. There it is. Summon the candle. Add from deck to... Or special summon from deck the hideous plant talismandra. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I am going to add Dogmatica Albazoa to hand. <gasps> Uh-oh. <laughs> um, we are... <laughs> I think we have it. I think we are there. I'm going to summon Aratama. Mm-hmm. We are going to add a spirit monster from deck to hand, and it's going to be uh, Shade Peacock. We'll activate uh, Shino Baron's Calling, Tribute the Candle, play Peacock. Mm -hmm. We will... Um, I don't want a my friend. Our <laughs> Tom is a sweetie pie. Um, Peacock will add a card from deck to hand, and it is going to be Shino Bird um, Power Spot. We will activate Power Spot. Declare yep. the effect of Stars Align. Mm -hmm. Special summon from uh, deck... Um, Oh, this doesn't quite do it. Okay, that's fine. We still got the lock online. I thought the best version of this deck, uh, the opening hand, summons Albazoa and then also establishes the Sheenal Bird loop. I thought for a second this was the hand that does that, and I don't think it is, but I think we can get close enough that we are probably good for next turn. It's going to be uh, Shade Peacock. Mm -hmm. Declare the effect. Add yep. from um, deck to hand a Shino Bird's Calling and a Shino Baroness Peacock. Yup. We will rock you. This is true. Um, well, that's from the song. Yeah, because we go Shino Bird's Calling. Special some of the peacock, banishing these two guys. Oh, wait, 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 no. What is optimal is getting the talismandra off the field and then only banishing one of these. I see it. I, um, oh, okay, yep, yeah. yep, yep. So, we're wamboing. We're wamboing. We're yeah. comboing, you know. Yeah. We will go to end phase. This is gonna come back to hand. We are going to use power spot to add a ritual spell card 
Um, I think we actually did fuck this up a tiny yeah. bit. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I was gonna say, how hard would it be to unfuck it? Um, probably pretty hard, but that is a Shino Bird's Calling and a set, uh, Stars Align. Mm-hmm. Um, also we get two tokens. Yeah. This Couple goes back to hand. Buckles. Yeah. I am realizing uh, there was a part in the combo I didn't do as optimally as I could because Stars Align can tribute Aratama, so I could have still had um, Peacock on the field for the end phase and gotten um, above the Shrine's yeah. effect a second time. I mean, um, that, that doesn't feel like that much of a change, you're just tributing Aratama for something instead. Yeah, just put Peacock back no. in hand, Aratama back in grave, and add one now more thing ahead, to him. Now go ahead, go ahead. Okay, cool. I am always pro <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we'll go ahead and um, yeah, we will. Uh, the other effect adds from grave or banished, right? Yes. So what we're actually gonna do here's the um, Sheena Bird's calling. Um. Mm. The field spell is going to add a um dogmatic calamity from deck to hand and the continuous is going to do a burt calling from graveyard to hand right. okay. and we did it we have established game state All we right. have okay um this hand might be able to do something off the back of the funniest line of all time <laughs> um um, yeah, no reason to do anything too saucy yet. Oh, um, yeah. we'll, we'll just get this into rotation. Yeah, um, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, we're, we're doing this. Um, Shino Baroness into Shino Baron. See, what I'm not liking is the fact that you have a million cards in hand, and I know they actually do something this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, um, uh, off of the, uh, bit of a mess of last time, this, this, mm -hmm. this round I do have, oh, also, uh, yoink. Yup, yup. We will all right. one day remember all of our combos. Jess, it is my joy and my privilege to tell you that for my first play of this duel, because I control no monsters, I will special summon Dino Wrestler Coalacelot. <laughs> 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 it's a level two tuna, baby. <laughs> um, I have died. Go ahead. And I mean, it does. It just says. It, it just says if you control no monsters, you can special summon this. It's <laughs> like a real. It is a real Yu-Gi-Oh card in that regard. Somehow. If I see a and, second uh... Dino Wrestler card. <laughs> So, I'll tell you, I'm not playing Dino Wrestler, but in addition <laughs> to Plunder Patrol and Unchained, I am playing a third engine. And I didn't think I would be, real, real, but I would be revealing it this way, um, by tributing my Coalacelot to normal summon Big Winged Baphomet. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, let's fucking go. Alrighty. I will be adding my level 4... Beast Monster and or Chimera Fusion for my deck to my <laughs> hand. And I don't think very much about the fact that I will only be adding one. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be Gazelle, the King of Mythical Claws. Ooh, we got the pair. We pulled them. Alrighty. And I will, in a shocking twist, activate the quick play spell card, Chimera Fusion. Whoa! It was already <laughs> in your hand. Holy shit. Alright. I will fuse. Um, oh, if I do that, it's so funny. Um, but I would also lose the game, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, I will fuse the big winged Baphomet and Gazelle, the king of mythical claws, to fusion summon my ultimate monster. I'm talking about Chimera, the king of phantom beasts. Let's fucking go! And we are gonna trigger a couple effects here. Yeah, One, for we're sure, gonna go sure. Gazelle to add an illusion monster from deck to hand, new type pog. I'm planning to. Well, trigger Chimera to discard a random card from your hand in the end phase. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So we'll do that. Um, we'll go Gazelle for an illusion. Uh, the fact that I've already normal summoned is slightly awkward. Um, Shino Baron, I assume, targets, right? Um, what are they not? Um, it's just, no, it says uh, you can return up to three cards. That's fucked up. 
Uh, yeah, you can double check. That's if fine. You want. We're gonna still get to a position where we can do a little something. I'm gonna add to my hand the cornfield koala. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I guess we want to do this now. Um, I will activate the effect of Chimera Fusion Engrave. Because I control Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, which this guy becomes, I can return Chimera Fusion to my hand. You got it. It, it does that. Fusion spells can just do that now. Uh, they, they were like, okay, fusion spells require you to go minus two, so I guess we need mm. to make them good sometimes. They really do. Um, I will declare Coradle. I'll discard it to search my deck for a monster that mentions Chimera Fusion. Yeah, you got it. Um, and we are gonna get... Uh, where's my guy? Where is my friend? Dude, uh, I will where's add my guy? Him. Uh, the Mural Sword Let's Knight. go! <laughs> yup, yeah. So what I control, um, Chimera, I can banish Kawada from Grave to negate an effect that targets a card I control. Um, which is not that good. <laughs> uh, but we can get into a position where it will be a bit better. I will... No, we actually do have to do it this no, we don't because of how chains walk. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. I figured it out. Um, Chimera Fusion. Alright, we're gonna Fusion Summon. Um, and I'll fuse away Chimera and the Mural Sword Knight in Hand. <laughs> um, and we are gonna go into Bofamet, the mythical king of Phantom Beast. Incredible. Oh, Alright. And, and now I'm feeling better. Actually, I'm, well, okay, a Mural Sword Knight negates the activation of a monster effect on the field. So I can't stop you summoning Baron, I can stop the Baron bounce. Which I feel okay about. Um, on the summon, I will trigger Baphomet to send one Beast Fiend or Illusion from the deck to the graveyard. Yeah. And uh, you know what seems like a pretty good card to send? Um, actually a bit of an awkward place here because, uh, because I had to start with Baphomet effect, I am locked into fusions out of the extra. Um, which I'm not super happy about, but it is what it is. Um, and no, I think it is just fine to do that. Yeah, we are going to send to the graveyard Unchained Soul of Shavara. Yeah, you got it. Um, and because Shavara was sent to grave, I'll set an Unchained Spell Trap from deck. Yeah. We are gonna... Oh wait, actually, let me check. Does this graveyard effect do what I want? It does, it really does. Oh, nifty. Um, I will set, um, Escape of the Unchained. Yeah. Um. Alright. Alright. Uh, so where are we at? We've done that. We have used the normal summon. Um. I have the Sword Knight and Kawada on the gates and grave. Dude, it's actually a... <laughs> Would you believe the Shino Bird power spot giving your Peacock 500 attack is kind of an issue? Oh my um, god, holy shit, I, um, I, that's actually really real. Yeah. Someday I um, will have all the stat lines on field accurate. Alright, so I'll just tell you what I'm thinking about here. I have a twister. The question is whether I need to clear the field spell because that's a battle card, or I clear the power spot because that lets me kill the peacock and deny a bounce, but leaves the field spell for next turn. That's not good either way. But, no, I'm talking my myself into dog shit plays. I gotta kill the field spell. The field <laughs> spell is definitely the better card. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna make sure I know the text on my card. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I will go battle. Sure. Um, we'll just try to clear a token here. Um... Hmm. So which one is it that negates the Sword Knight? Um, yes. Negates the effect of a monster on field. Okay. Um, and notably, negates does not destroy. Yeah. So, I am gonna go for the trap card here. Sure. Um, and I'm gonna do something a little bit funky. We're gonna go for the Shino Baroness and target your back row. Ah, uh, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't do that. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um... Yeah. Oh, okay. Are we, are we summoning a level 4 lower spirit from the deck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, do you want to just call the ritual spell? 
Um, not really, if it's all the same to you. Um, I mean, that's fair. We will go for Peacock. Yeah. Okay. Um... And now your guy is big as fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a beef. Okay. This is a beefy baroness. Okay. 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 Uh, main phase two. Um, this is get a little more defense going, shall we? I will activate the plunder patrol shipyard. Sure. Um, and we will shipyard pitching white beard. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna add black eyes, and I'll trigger a white beard effect to special. Sure. Um, it's gonna be Gordon hair. Um, I hope we can actually do, like, a, like, a thing here, which is fun. No, we can't because I'm fusion locked, uh, which is the third of the three Xeno locks. <laughs> um. Uh, but that's fine. We can just sit on guys. We still have, like, if you squint, we have two negates, you know? Um. I will pass on this. All right. And, um... Yeah, and, you want to bounce and know your guy. And, <laughs> and, and we will go, um, add this to hand. Yup, and you get your, uh, tokens. Oh, I do. Alright. You surely do. <laughs> okay, so I have engraved now. Okay, an so. An field monster negate, a targeting effect negate, and the, um, the fusion can quick effect banish to revive a beast fiend or illusion from the grave. Okay. I mean, let's just fucking go for it, you know? Let's fucking boogie. Uh, dogmatic calamity. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are doing it. I'm gonna we send done. hot red dragon yeah! archfiend king calamity. It really is the dogmatic calamity. <laughs> to special summon dogmatica albazoa, motherfucker. Oh, we are with the final boss, baby. All right, um, Lore so... is back. <laughs> Um, then we'll just declare Albazoa. What do you want? And I will be sending half my extra deck to the graveyard, I suppose. Sounds good. Are uh, there going to be six cards because it runs down? Yes. Alright. Behold my strongest monsters. We are <laughs> going to send a Virtual World Beast Juju. Uh, we're going to send Scarlight. We're going to send Master King Archfiend. We're gonna send <laughs> somehow one of the best generic rank fours right now, a Grenosaurus Giga Cannon. You oh. got it. <laughs> That's what, four? I need two more. I uh, don't think we're ever making Vespinado. And I don't think there's ever a universe where we actually get to Rotten. Gotcha. Alright. Um that's kind of funny, so we'll start with that. We're mm -hmm, going mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. Link Summon Wind of the Wind Charmer Verdant. Oh, you saw? <laughs> no, you're, you're shitting me. <laughs> no, it can't be. <laughs> oh, why did the corn make you wind? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wish is correct. <laughs> Um, we cannot do this in this order because the, um, uh, Calamity extra deck locks for the rest of turn. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did this the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but... I mean, what, I mean, what the fuck am I gonna do about yeah. it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you can take my corn. Yeah. Um... Oh, actually, or you can take the fucking... Oh, my God. What can I take? Actually... No, I can't yeah. take the ju... I can't take the juju. I, I, I was thinking the cornfield, because I was going to say, if you're targeting um, the Chimera in Grave, I'm chaining Chimera. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, then we'll, fuck it, we'll just grab your corn. We'll steal Not your my fucking corn. corn. <laughs> oh. We got this correct on the first try, folks. That's the thing that's about true. us. Yeah. And I, I will be saving the Chimera here. I've got to save that to keep my other shit online, I think. Yeah. All right, now Abazawa happens. Um, not, not, maybe not. I might be doing, I might, <laughs> sorry, I might be doing, so I might want some link summoning to happen in a hot second. Um, right, well, well, just let me know if we get to the end of May and I gotta put my friends back in the extra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just an advanced angle shoot to see that I'm playing Grenosaurus Giga Cannon. Uh, you know what? I guess we'll go ahead and, uh, jump on that. Uh, I'm going to link these guys off in order to make, uh, SP Little Knight. <laughs> That's pretty good! And I would like to, um... 
attempt to um i guess we could attempt to banish <laughs> sword knight to just force the sword knight yeah i'll try to banish the sword knight ah uh, well uh we will mirror our sword knight um <laughs> dude you bought both ip and sp you have the power of the <laughs> that's incredible oh boy um <laughs> we will do i need to do more link summoning this turn we we can't attack you directly so there's not a huge amount of incentive to extend necessarily so the the mild problem i'm running into in combos is like what do I do once all of my um, Shino bitches are in the graveyard? So I guess we will normal summon Manju, declare effect. We're always doing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, um, for sure, uh-huh. I guess we'll just um, throw throw another peacock onto the pile. <laughs> yep, Why yep, not? Yep. Yep. Um, we will activate... Shino Bird's calling. Mm -hmm. We will tribute Manju to throw down Shade Peacock. Shade Peacock effect. Grab the yeah. field spell. Uh oh. <laughs> Activate the field spell. Uh oh. <laughs> Use the field spell. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, but I can't. I can't use. Um... Okay, so you know what? I actually added another uh, peacock to hand and not that I baron. That. Um, I, I and remember when the that reason for that. Um, oh, but does this need to be from the field? God, this is the problem. Is we don't have enough ways to get um, stuff yeah. back into hand, so it's actually kind of hard to make a proactive play with my rituals right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be real with you. Uh, Albazoa Little Knight, when I'm on yeah. three cards, is not looking too bad. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's just where we're at. Uh, we, we have zoomed back to present, folks. We've done this it. Is, this Wanna is... put that away? Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, we will go uh, um, into battle phase, and we'll go Albazoa, attack Burfamet. Yeah, I'll eat 16. Ouchie wouchie. Cool. I'm gonna attack this to feel good about myself. You've done it? Um, we go to end phase. Um, Peacock goes to hand and we trigger both of these guys. Yup. We put a calling in hand. We get a, um, stars align from deck and then we have to discard about 10 billion about yeah. 20 um, billion you get the stars line and then you get a ritual spell from deck right because that's one trigger of the field spell and then the continuous or do i have a calling in deck yes i do oh, i was it's... gonna say there's only two in rotation so it's got to be somewhere this this uh that's just how my sick <laughs> little mind works um okay so it's oh. you and it's <laughs> You <laughs> and we mm -hmm. are caught. We have achieved game state. Yeah. Um, and still in end phase, I will Chimera to summon from grave. Sure. Um, we are gonna actually target. I think we target the Shalvara. Yeah. So we'll summon that. Um, and then still in end phase, I'll activate the effect of the other fusion to target a banished beast fusion or illusion or summon it. Sure. Um, I'll target Chimera. Yeah. Alright. Uh Draw Photon. Okay. Um Boink. I... Yup. Um we are adding add this one. Yeah. Okay. So where am I at? The Kawadal and Grave contests Little Knight as long as Chimera is in play. It does not contest Albazoa, it, or the Albazoa protection. It does not contest the Shino Baron. Um, okay. Okay. Surely there is a line here. There simply must be. I refuse to believe there's not. 
Okay, step one, we are going to um, effect of Cornfield Coaddle. Um, got a monster that mentions Chimera Fusion. Um, wait, where is I? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna add to the hand a second copy of Mural Sword Knight. Yeah. Um, I love how Mir Mirror Sword Knight works against Albazola. <laughs> this guy, come on. This guy, well, I mean, <laughs> he's trying his best. Um, I will normal summon the Sword Knight. Yeah. And this card. Really annoying that card walked that way, um, instead of a way where it was better. Um, but, so I can do a line that kind of forces out the bounds. What do I accomplish by doing that? Uh, I guess we might as well do this. I will declare Chimera Fusion to add back to hand. Sure. Uh, we don't have any targets in the extra at the moment, does have to be said. Um... No, oh, god, I, 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 I'm so close to figuring this out. I, my brain is steaming. <laughs> It's on the tip of my thoughts. <laughs> I ooh the tip to the tip of what now? Chat, <laughs> chat. Uh, people are asking the tip of what now? So important to note: a um, mural sword knight can banish from field or grave to negate. Yeah. Um, what why we gotta do this? So the issue is I have to get one more material in rotation. No, I guess we can't just do it like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This works because of that. And by works, I mean it does some stuff, but doesn't beat the Albazoa. Um, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, I'm gonna link off Shavara, Gordon Hair, and Mural Sword Knight. Yeah. The three engines working together. Um, and I will summon Unchained Soul of Anguish. And trigger Shalvara to set a unchained spell trap. Sure. Soul of Anguish cannot link with Albazoa, right? Um, no, it cannot. Okay. Then we're just vibing for now. Um, it's gonna be the revive trap. Yeah. Um, and we will just get through this. I will. Soul of Anguish targeting Little Knight. <laughs> uh, we will declare the effect of Little Knight. Um, and effect of Cornfield Coaddle. Oh no! Wait. Actually, wait a minute. Do I? I guess it's fine. It's actually very annoying because Coaddle negates. Coaddle does negate and destroy, which means I don't get to link some in here. <laughs> <laughs> Insanely funny. Uh, we will still do it though. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's like anguish of the floater. Sitting on it's not awful. Um, hmm. Then how the fuck am I beating this Albazoa? I have outs in the deck. Um,. Uh, yeah, you know, just draw your Parasomnia pillow. You know I'm siding. I, I'm no, it's correct. Cor every time I go second, it's, it's my best friend. Correct in this matchup for sure. <laughs> um, question is, do I have anything I can do? I'm. Do I can do this? Get back that. That's like cute. It doesn't achieve much. Um, I don't know, what I really want to do is get the destroy trap off of Shalvara, because that also out Albazoa. But what it doesn't do is put an Unchained in play. So what I really should have done is get that trap. What if I do a little cheating? Yeah, 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 yeah. go, go right <laughs> Let's ahead. Let's figure out the line. <laughs> um, no, 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 it absolutely has to be Escape. Um, because Escape does out Albazoa. Oh, we can pop the Sword of Anguish. We also have a bunch of other stuff, um, but I can't do it this turn. Um, so I guess I will move to end phase. We you are wanna, wanna do anything? going to banish stars align across the Milky Way. We're going to pitch mm -hmm. Shino Bird's Calling, and we're su going to summon Shino Baroness Peacock, declaring the uh, targeting the back row. And we do have to declare a uh, Mural Sword Knight. For sure. Now, this does not negate the go back to hand part, right? That's still happening? Um, no, it I'll still go back to hand, unfortunately. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And, um, we will get a... I don't know if we have, um, any targets left, but we have... Mm. Yeah, also unfortunate I couldn't navigate into a position where I could end on the quick effect one. Fields? I don't think I had a way to get another monster into play without, uh, getting locked into plunder patrols. <laughs> the field spell is going to add a, um... Uh, uh, calling from graveyard to hand, and yeah. the uh, power spot is going to add 
the uh, Shino Bear into hand. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything else in end phase, so go right ahead. All right. Um, and we might as well just stand by phase fire escape to get rid of Albazoa. Yeah. My extra deck a bit. Oh, oh, don't forget your tokens too. Oh yeah. Um, and then Anguish, when it goes to Grave, I can target a Fiend in Grave and add it to hand. Um, we're gonna target the Shavara. For sure, for sure. Um, so I actually am realizing that I did not activate the mm -hmm. effect of the field spell. Or not, no, I activated the effect of the field spell, but not, I did not activate yeah. the effect of Power Spot because okay. I just need cards in graveyard uh, or in deck to do anything mm -hmm. um, okay <laughs> yeah so we will go i mean that is uh do you have any quick effect stuff left um i have a kawada left so i can negate a targeting effect um other than that nothing unless the chimera goes to grave then we'll just try to go for lethal um field spell will um tribute these um, to special summon the Peacock from deck. Mm-hmm. Whoop. Um, Peacock will bounce your monster. Oh, that is an enormous problem. God, if, if this were the Fiend and we could target it with Shalvara, everything would be so much better. Um, yeah. And we will summon Peacock in the process. We mm -hmm. will go Shino Bird Calling. See, this is the thing we've been needing to do all game, is just banish some motherfuckers from Graveyard. But here's uh, Baroness Peacock. These guys are all massive. Mm -hmm. They're all getting boosted. Um, this is more, far more than lethal. Uh, let's just go to battle phase and see what happens. Uh, yeah, you do got it. Alrighty! <laughs> Yeah, it's unfortunate. If the Chimera had gone to Grave, I could have revived Whitebeard, and then Whitebeard I get to tag into mm. um, the Dark Thunder Patrol guy, because you have Little Knight in Grave. Ooh, uh, but alas, it was not to be. Yeah, no, that was not, uh, that w didn't feel super decided <laughs> until right at the end. No, uh, I'm having a blast. Get... What a Honestly, blast. yeah, I was going to say, um, post sevens does not feel that different from like uh, pre sevens, mm. any point in the post pot environment. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting matchup. Um, and these yeah. things are pretty well balanced, are uh, pretty well matched for each other. Oh, um, man. I have better kind of grind game, whereas you lose monsters as, uh, your deck churns them out, but your monsters are really fucking crazy, and you can establish a lot of stuff in the graveyard. They are um, indeed. So yeah, uh, let's, let's see <laughs> how game three goes. Yeah, let's see how it goes when I get to go first. Who <laughs> is gonna be interesting. <laughs> All right, this is a very cool, very interesting match. Um, see how it goes when we're going second game three, but I think we have some op options. Here's an internal flame banshee. Oh wait, this is really good if we get snake eyes stuff in rotation. Okay, um, not bad to see at all. And then a TG mighty striker. Okay, we will add this to the collection and side for game three for going second. All right, game three. Um, going into it at a disadvantage because I'm going to be going second this time, but we will see. We will indeed, and I am happy to say, folks, I love the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. <laughs> we are fucking gaming. I'm happy I got to show off all of my many little guys. <laughs> I I was going to say it's nice that we're seeing such a variety at this point in the right. series. Like, I haven't felt a need to run back any decks yet. Right. Like, you're playing a deck no one's played in years. I'm, I'm just playing three decks, <laughs> like... We're seeing a lot of stuff. <laughs> um... And, yeah. Alright. That is what we need. Um... Cornfield Kawada. You got it. Um, I will add, of course, Gazelle, the King of Mythical Claws. For sure, for sure. Um, our normal Gazelle, um, effects as such. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess we can't do... 
the craziest combo of all time because oh well, no, I guess we can just go for that, right? Um, don't love the sound of uh, we can't go for the craziest combo of all time. Well, actually, no, we can do some kind of nutty stuff for sure. I'll add Chimera Fusion. Yeah. Um, and it may shock you to know I will activate Chimera Fusion. Yeah, for sure. And this can fuse any beast and fiend. So we will fuse, um, Gazelle with, um, classic Chimera card, Bluebeard, the Thunder Patrol <laughs> shipwreck. Um, this is how- Yugi Moto used this shit in the first episode! And then we're gonna trigger 10,000 billion effects. Yeah, yeah, you um, got I think it. Do we even want to trigger Blackbeard? I actually think I kind of don't. Or Bluebird, yeah. So we'll go Gazelle to search. We'll go Chain Link to Chimera to discard a random card at end phase. Yeah. I'm gonna get an illusion. That's gonna be the Mirror Sword Knight. Yeah. I will Chimera Fusion add to hand. Yeah. Um, Chimera Fusion. You got it. That's gonna be... The Chimera plus the Sword Knight into Baphomet. Um, and it's gonna be Baphomet to Fordash. Yes. And then, given the fact I need to decide... No, I really do want to do that. Due to the fact that it is... Oh my god, yeah, we have this. Yeah, this goes... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I literally just, like, forgot how Chimera works earlier. This does do <laughs> everything. Um, I'm gonna dump Unchained Soul of Shiyama. Yeah. I will set one, and Shiyama target the set. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna be Shiyama pop escape, effective escape. Yeah, you got it. Um, we are gonna go into Shavara. And this is why this is so good. I didn't activate the effect of, um, main deck Baphomet, which means I am not fusion locked. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, so we will link to into Soul of Rage. Yeah. Um, Shalvara to set from deck. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna grab the second escape. Um, um, and then we'll just, uh, set two more and, uh, pass on that. <laughs> Alright. Um, stand by main. I um, mean, that's full combo. It's Soul of Rage plus the two Chimera negates. Alright. Um, I will start with Sonic Bird. Yeah! <laughs> you do what you gotta do, motherfuckers. Oh my we god, it's doing... a wind monster! Synergy! <laughs> Very yo, true! Wait, yo, yo, wait, you go plus if I compulse your sonic bard. That's, that's crazy. true, that's true. Um, yeah, we will go Dogmatic Calamity. Uh-huh. Um, need to make a hard choice about what direction we're going with this turn before we start, because... Once we get started, it's a little bit... Okay. Um... Yeah, we will go, uh, Shino Bird's Calling. Yeah. Um... Peacock, Tribute, the Sonic Bird. Mm-hmm. Um... Peacock Effect. Um, and at least... No, that's fine, that's fine. I'm being dumb. There's no way we stop this. We grab the field spell. Yup. Activate the field spell. Um, on activation, I will Chimera and Grave targeting Shalvara. Sure. Oh, also, the Shiyama went to bottom of deck. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That some of the effect. So it's gonna be Shalvara. Um, and on resolution of that, I will escape targeting Shalvara and the field spell. You figured out the deck's weakness. <laughs> Regrettably. Uh, Shavara to set. Yeah, you got it. Um, gonna be Abominable Chamber. Um, we will follow that up by crying. Good plan. Um... Yeah, you know what? Um, this is a little bit uh weird, so we're just gonna go a tiny bit all in. Um, mm -hmm. incantation bookstone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, revealing the dogmatic calamity. Sure. Special summon the plant. Mm-hmm. And add Albazoa. 
Yeah. Um, dogmatic calamity. Mm -hmm. We will send hot red archfiend to go Albazoa. On summon Terra's. No! <laughs> um, it's gonna be Albazoa, and you can have your dogmatic calamity. <laughs> Wow, this is so nice of you. Uh, mm -hmm. well, we did our best. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and because I would like to flex a little, um, at end of main phase, I'm gonna activate Soul of Rage, targeting the, um, Shade Peacock. Yeah, you got it. Um, and using my Soul of Rage and your Shade Peacock, I will link summon SP Little Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Jess and Sophie, <laughs> not pull secret mirror challenge! Impossible! <laughs> I'm gonna banish your fucking Tadis man to fuck you. <laughs> so true! Uh, <laughs> you got it. Oh, drop a ton. Oh no. Uh, let's see if we can't clean this up real quick. Um. <laughs> I mean, surely. Uh, well, Chimera Fusion to add back. Yeah. It's just free shit, you know? It's a call <laughs> I have in my hand, for sure. Um, I'll activate, uh, the trap. Yeah. Um, I can summon Soul of Rage. That's extremely funny. <laughs> um, and we will be summoning Soul of Rage, because I don't think I actually have lethal. This deck doesn't put out a ton of damage. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, I think, I mean, you've, you've won the game. No... Uh, yeah. Not a lot of people watching this are going to deny that without the field spell. Um, no, but... then normal summon the most important card in this setup. White Beard, the Plunder Patrol Hell. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so, you know, we're just gonna... Yeah, just... just... <laughs> we're just, uh... And, uh, you know... <laughs> It's only four disruptions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think this will go really well for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Talismandra, uh, Reveal Shade. Yeah. Uh, oof. And mm -hmm. then, um... <laughs> the fuck am I even adding at this point? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess, I guess we'll, like, say that we made an attempt. Um, we'll go... Worst fucking one, Pencil Plume. Yeah! Um... Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you can actually Albazoa again. Hold on, wait, I... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It, it is my great joy and amazement to tell you that I have to Sword Knight the Pencil Plume. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We're not topping that. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't I did not Honestly, yeah. that was very that was <laughs> that was enjoyable. These are decks that both do things. Um they do. your deck is like an amalgamation of a bunch of different things that have a couple of yep. anti synergies, but not ultimately enough to really yeah. deter it from the fact that all the individual cards at this stage are just really good. Um, my deck sets up a very powerful fundamental lock, and if we ever got to a hand where we were able to turn one Albazoa and have the, um, loop in rotation, we probably would have, yeah. um, uh, had a lot of things going for us. The downside as ever with Ritual is that you need a very specific set of cards in rotation. You do, yeah. Yeah, um, no, this was... This was a really fun one. Like, no one's ever actually played a Shinobud deck in the history of time, um, because it's not very good. Uh, but I get showed off in this one. It did some crazy combos. It was going plus 10. I'm yeah. happy I got to show up with my stupid pile of incidental synergies that sometimes <laughs> knocks yourself out of a half of the deck. Beautiful. Um, yeah, no, the Shinobirds are, um... Very much the situation where, like, we've seen this a couple times in DPT since the Vrains era. Ritual decks that actually do get enough support yeah. to do strong things in especially sealed formats. Um, I would say that this is probably between this Vendred and 
Um, Megalith. This is probably mm. the least convoluted one, which is fucking saying something because these <laughs> are know. fully uh, spirit ritual monsters. But mm -hmm. um, it has a very clear game plan, and uh, the problem is that the field spell needs... There needs to be some way of, like, protecting the field spell if it wants to, like... Right. Um, compete with some of the higher. I mean, like that's not the only thing it would need, but like one one thing that I notice in this matchup, especially. Yeah, definitely a weakness. Um, God, this was a really cool. I like Yu Gi Oh. What the <laughs> fuck? This I do like. I do like Yu Gi Oh. I will suggest a couple bands. First of mm -hmm. all, are we? <laughs> are uh, okay. do we be dumb woman? <laughs> So it is clearly correct <laughs> of a dumb woman, but what else? <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad going second tool. It kind of it yeah. kind of helps that element of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I was like the one thing is if we keep her around, um I assume you are gonna do this anyway, but we do need to hit Unchained really hard. No, 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 um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I am actually going to, uh, please keep the $10,000 woman. You know what? If there's two things we like on DPT, yeah. it's women and money, so I'm yeah. convinced. Um, I am going to use, um, an extra ban here. Makes sense. I am actually, um, going to ban the new, uh... The new main decks are guys are good. Um, yeah, they're very no, like 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 Shavara is the card that makes the deck. Like yeah. this guy does everything. So I'm going to use an extra ban on Shavara, and then I'm going to use my actual ban on Soul of Rage. All right, all right, Unchained beat up. Kind of surprised Chimera made it through entirely unscathed. I'm happy about that. There might be there might be reasons for that. I mean the Chimera um, <laughs> the Chimera engine's very yeah. sick. I'm a fan of it. No, it is um, fun. And, and it it's also up. like it's not a full deck is the thing about it's it. It's not. It's like six and, like, it cards. Kinda sorta set up two disruptions, but the but like one only negates targeting, one only negates effects on field. It's all dependent on like, keeping one monster on board, you know, with no way to stop you from like fucking fissuring it. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Nifty little engine. No, I really can't believe you're leaving Plunder Patrol on hit. I mean, they did so much that game. <laughs> I mean, like, how... Who am I to tell people not to do crime, you know? Yeah. End of the day, that's just, just not what this show is about. We're a family show. It's true. Um, and then for my ban, I... You know, I hate to do it. Rituals are cool. But this deck is strong enough that for the sake of variety, I think I do need to ban Stars Align above the Shrine. Ooh, alrighty. Yeah, the field spell is what concentrates the power in the deck. It's how you keep advantage. Mm. It's how you get your trap card into rotation. So uh, that will definitely... <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, I'll finish your thought. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, that that was it. That's that's the thought. Yeah. No thoughts. I was gonna say, so is there anything we do want to be dumb with? But um, if we're being stupid, um, and hanging on to woman, um, I guess uh, do you want to do anything about the fact that any ritual deck has their first twenty cards pre-chosen? It's ritual. They need it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that that's, to them. <laughs> I mean, that's real. <laughs> that's real so invalid. Uh, <laughs> what, what if we are just pre badum gravekeepers and script or whatever? Yes, is. yes. Actually, that's a really good point. Sophie and I both pulled this card. And I think it's probably like a card that would be good in the side deck. I just keep forgetting about it because it's kind of like Damn. a. It's I, I literally forgot it again. Yeah, it's just like it's it's just a kind of like a uh, make your opponent not play the game situation. So we'll do that. Mm. Uh, we'll we'll yeah. be in 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 ten thousand dollar woman's place. We will ban a different secret rare that we and probably each pulled. <laughs> Thank fucking god. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so, yeah. A big hit to Unchained. Hit to the Shino Bird engine. I will say, um, there are a couple of different things I'm looking at. And I yeah. am actually excited to see what next match looks like. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. But, you know, I know one card that's going to go in it. <laughs> Hi folks, we are going into Age of Overlord. I think at this point, I have pretty much all the common stuff, which means if we want to get anything good, we kind of have to high roll. And this set has higher high rolls, so let's see if we can get lucky again. Uh, not in the first pack, for sure. 
Um, Exceed the Pendulum is very cool. Unfortunately, we don't have Beyond the Pendulum. Um, and this card is not very good if it's your only Pendulum support link, but it is what it is. Um, Exceed's Armor Fortress is nice. I, I didn't realize, after the reroll, I actually didn't get any of these guys. But, this is still probably good enough. Um, if we can find a couple of these, we'll definitely play it. More taint, we're always getting taint. Well, Arias the Labyrinth Butler is almost completely useless because, um, we don't have enough Labyrinth cards. But, it is a hot woman in a suit, so thank you, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro deck. <laughs> oh no. Oh, we may have made a mistake, we may have made an error. We might regret not, um, but dumbing this, folks. Oh, boy. Uh, TG all clear, kind of nice. I don't know that we actually have enough TGs to do anything with. And, um, if she's almost torpedo, that's good. I don't know if we have the trap, though. Don't you need the trap to do anything with this? Either way, we will toss those into the collection and go play double little night, I guess. Why the fuck not? All right, this is actually uh, against uh, I Wish TCG's recommendations, but we're going to do four Duelist Nexus and four Age of Overlord because the Chimera stuff is cool, and we could use a couple more of those cards, but we could also use some stuff in Age of Overlord. Um, we could not really use another Magician of Faithfulness. Um, I don't think that's exactly what we needed, but that's kind of cool. Uh, Magnum the Revolver. And a playset of Chimera the Illusion Beast. That is uh, unnecessary. Age of Overlord. Another TG Mighty Striker. Switchpoint. Um, Realm LG. And a third copy of Xyz Arm Fortress. That probably will not come up, but that's okay. We'll save this to the collection and figure out what we're doing for next match. <laughs> We're being goofy today, folks. We are being a little bit silly goofy. So, I don't know if we ever mentioned this in an episode, but because Penguin Brave is really funny, Jess and I agreed to unban Nightmare Penguin, a card that's been banned forever by the Gravekeeper's Gog Laws, but is completely fine in this era of Yu-Gi-Oh! It does, however, have a very cool combo with the new support where we can summon this face down and quick effect flip it up. That's pretty cool. Really silly that penguins are a playable engine, but they're not enough to build a full deck, so you have to play it with something else. And I thought, you know what? I was playing Plunder Patrol last time, but they didn't really get to do anything because they were overshadowed by the fact that Unchained and Chimera are actual good decks. So how bet so how better to show off the power of Plunder than by pairing it with a deck so bad Plunder will look great by comparison? Now, this is not a perfect plan. If Jess isn't playing a deck that gives us dark or earth monsters to work with, our plunders are not going to be doing very good. Uh, but she will, you know, why wouldn't she? If nothing else, we know she's going to be playing Little Knight, so at least there's going to be a dark to turn on the Moak, if nothing else. So as for the actual deck itself, we, we are again on every single plunder we own, you have to maximize our names for this deck. We're on a whole bunch of penguins, two Nightmare, two No Penguin, one, one each of Cleric and Ninja, and three Penguin Squire. This is the good one. You can step up a set monster on your field to special summon it um, and reduce its level by one or two. Which very easily lets you set up a synchro summon for something like a penguin brave or a white or a monoceros. Unfortunately, you can't really go into any other stuff because it can only summon waters, but that's fine. We're also on two great emperors um, and one puny penguin. This is important because a summon of puny and square off of great emperor gets to penguin brave. Um, and then we're on some spell traps. We got Plunder Patrol Shipyard, of course. We have the one Royal Penguin's Garden, which I had more. Three Salvage, and then some good traps. Terrors, some attractions, and White Howling, which is a way to sell off spells for the turn. We're also playing the one of Ice Jade Ran Adrian and Ice Jade Cradle. This is much worse because we don't actually have a Synchro to go into, but this card being functionally a free area is probably fine. Exodeck is about what you expect. We got some synchros, we got some Xyz, we got some links. 
But Vince has great Bubble Beak, is a generic Water Boss monster that's pretty good, and we can use Ladder up to it with either Area or Miss Starboy. And of course, we are playing both copies of Little Knight. Crazy if you get to say that. There's really nothing interesting in the side. You've seen this all before. So let's go ahead and hop into the game and see if this mess of a deck can somehow produce as good of a match as last time. Every match of the post Power of the Element era, I have chosen a new deck to pilot, and today is no exception. There are actually a lot of really, really cool things happening in this format at this point in time. So once again, we are going to be piloting a new deck, Nemluria. Now, we are really close to modern Yu-Gi-Oh, like really, really close to present day, so much so that every video I watched on this deck and every person I've seen discuss it lately has called it Nemoralia, which I think is like either its OCG name or it was like its name uh, prior to print. For that reason, Nemoralia is the one that is more in my brain and I'm probably just going to continue to call it that. But that is your explanation for those of y'all who might be wondering why I say things that are not on the card. I suppose th this time it's intentional as opposed to all the unintentional times I say things that are not on a card. So this deck focuses on Dreaming Nemoralia a pendulum scale that is really, really searchable. And the whole gimmick is that if you empty your extra deck, then you can special summon this card from your face-up extra deck. And on summon, it gets to banish any number of cards up to uh, three times the number of your face-down banished cards. So you get rid of your whole extra deck and then summon this and banish six cards. It's incredible. This is a strange deck. It is a strange blendings of different mechanics that would make anybody who doesn't already understand multiple aspects of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game's brains explode, and likely many who do the same thing but it all centers around this one sleepy girl and the terrifying dream creatures that are guarding her while she sleeps there are a lot of lights and darks so we are on five main deck bestials we've got druis worm magnumut uh, and three baldrake we've got this really cute new draw engine in the form of three jen the diamond tiger and two ken the warrior dragon basically these are level three warriors that summon each other from the deck to your opponent's field and then they have text that like if you are this guy is summoned your opponent draws two and discard one or you discard one card so you're creating that effect for your opponent to experience we've got one behemoth the king of a hundred battles this is just kind of a towers and it has really really good recycling capabilities with the uh, beast type monsters in this deck, but overall the stars of the show are the Nemorelias. We've got three Nemorelia Dream Defender Coet. We've got three Orieller, three Revile, and two Realized. Orieller's function is being the main attacking line. Coet is a negate of a card that targets Realize is consistency or a book of moon, and revile is a body and or a way to get one of the traps online. In the lore of this deck, Melfi Caddy is the dreaming Nemorelia's in real life cat who is summoning these horrible beasts to guard her human at all costs. But then we've got the dreaming Nemorelia, which of course just summons itself from the face up extra deck when you have banished all your face down cards from the extra deck. Fucking incomprehensible and silly, and I'm so excited. The spell cards, three Dream Tower of Princess Nemorelia. This card is really fucking good. It's basically the same vibe as Therion Discoliseum in terms of the protection it invites, and then it just adds two from deck to hand every turn it's out on the field. Sweet Dreams Nemorelia is similarly bonkers. It adds one of the Dreaming Nemorelias to hand, and then you can banish it to get your Nemorelias off of the board, which can be important for combos. Nemorelia Love is a free guide that becomes a battle trap in the graveyard. Now, Nemorelia Repeater is really, really good. It can negate all the cards on Sophie's side of the field, all the monsters, excuse me. And then one Terrace of the Overroot, because I didn't know what to put in the 4th slot. Very little of my extra deck is summonable. We don't need it, and frequently we won't be able to summon from it. Testina, the divinity that defies darkness, might be good for a board wipe if Sophie's on a lot of trap cards. 
we're on the faithful raw 10 and sp little knight otherwise everything else is just silly we've got red potan another bestial lava golem thunder king the lightning strike kaiju three twister one banishing trap hole two terrors of the overroot three chthonian palmer and one the trans migration prophecy in the side let's see how the sleepy girl deck does Welcome back, YouTube! Um, so apparently Yu-Gi-Oh! is good now, and every time I attempt to play a, uh, like a repeat of a deck, like run something back, I wish I was dead, is like, here's this weird fucking brew, and I'm like, this brew is my child now. So we are, uh, yeah. gonna be going on, in the post, um, Power of the Elements, um, era of DPT, match six, and, uh, new deck number six. Hell yeah. Listen, Yu-Gi-Oh! is good. Last match was a blast. And let me tell ya, the deck I'm playing today, I'm not sure it'll generate so back and forth a match, <laughs> but it will be a silly, goofy time. That I can promise. Okay. That could oh. be either a horrifying threat, or, a, or, or, a, or a Sophie classic. <laughs> Oh yes. no! Holy oh shit! Oh my god! I the, did it! The dynasty is over! <laughs> I did it! I don't know what to do with myself anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this hand is ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> um, oh, I mean, I love I could do the that. trading card game. And then I could do that, and then I can end on a card that almost does something. I'm not doing that. What does Shannon Tone want? This is completely fine. Okay. Um, Sophie, I hope you're ready. I hope you're motherfucking ready to... Uh, we were talking about race cars. We're not going to be racing any cars. We're not going to be going anywhere. We are going to lay in our beds, and we mm -hmm. are going to go EP. <gasps> yes! Because yes! I activate yeah! Sweet Dreams Nemorelia, motherfucker! <laughs> Holy shit, it's time to get EP chat! It is time oh for EP girl, motherfuckers! Um, We are I... going to bed! <laughs> we are going all the fucking way to bed! Um, I am going to activate Dreaming Nemorelia. Yeah! We're going to declare the effect, activate from the deck it's going to be. Oh, it's gonna be the fucking dream tower of Princess Nemorelia. Um, I should mention at this point, um... Every single person I talk to about this deck still calls it Nemorelia, despite the, um, I don't know if this is because a, of a difference in TCG and OCG, or because it's, like, so, printed, yeah. um, or, or if it's, like, a weird spelling. Um, yeah, uh, I am going to continually call it Nemorelia, because that is just the way I have heard it multiple times. <laughs> Whoa, 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 a Yu-Gi-Oh player pronouncing a card name wrong? We can't fucking have that, Jess. <laughs> We're gonna go Dream Tower of Nemorelia Banish. You, you wanna put this card in the Astrodeck face up? Oh, uh, yeah, a whole bunch, actually. She's gone to bed. She's lying on her bed. She has. Happy We're, for her. We will go Dream Tower. God, I relate to Nemoleria as I was up till like, um, I was up till like 3 a.m. last night chatting with friends, and now I I'm think fucking EP. I <laughs> am going to... Uh, I think we're good to banish XYZ Dragon Cannon and XYZ Dragon Cannon. Well, they are. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I guess and... it doesn't matter that you told me what that was, huh? <laughs> it really doesn't. <laughs> we are going to... We will go... Or... Or... Leiler? Or... Orieler. Um... Mm -hmm. Oriler. Bill O'Reilly. And... Uh, then it'll be just Revile. That's fine. Um... Cool. We are going to, uh, yeah, we are going to normal summon Jen the Diamond Tiger. Yo, boyfriend. <laughs> We're going to activate Jen, and we are going to special summon to your side of the field, Sophie, uh, Ken the Warrior Dragon. God, you really are. Um, and then I'm going to draw to discard one. That is how this works. These cards are so cute. I am a huge really fan are. of them. Alright, All right. the new condition by which I will come is if you follow this up with triple attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the combo. 
<laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> oh wow, this deck is actually really good. I guess we um will discard this Nemorelia Lu because it actually does something in the graveyard. Um, so I'm gonna be so real with you. That, that is technically true. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, let's let's get some insight. Let's get some insight. Let's take a look at your hand. Oh, this is gonna be it. So I'm gonna reveal these one by one for storytelling purposes. <laughs> All right. uh, so the first card in my hand is gonna be Golden Hair, the newest Thunder Patrol. Okay, sure, so, for sure. You no, know, I played these last week. Um, they didn't get to do much though, and I feel like that's really because they can make plays, but they were really overshadowed by being paired with more powerful engines, you know, in Unchained and Chimera. Um, so I decided to solve that problem by pairing them with something much worse, which is like a second card in my hand is Note Penguin. <laughs> yes! 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 Chad! Chad! We're fucking penguining! <laughs> <laughs> this is the best this is the best show on youtube uh i guess we're gonna i guess we're gonna add back the fucking plunder patrol that's perfectly fine i don't need it all oh, i need is my no penguin no. oh my god okay i'm hot back in squire all right um we're just gonna go all in uh coet yep <laughs> Horly air. Yup. Um, and, uh, reveal. And that's <laughs> I mean, three. it's the fucking crew. I don't know, I don't know what else to say. Boop. Boop. Uh, boop, that's gonna be three VW Tiger Catapult. Important. Um, we're gonna go, um, <laughs> battle phase, and, yeah, fuck it. We're just gonna, uh, start going for damage. Mm -hmm. Um, one of these guys is... 95% chance that's a nightmare penguin, so we'll just eat that. Ouch. And, uh, yeah. Man. But, you know, I really wish your guy didn't negate targeting. I wish he wouldn't do that. Anyway, it's just another golden hair, you know. <laughs> it's, just a, it's, it's just a fucking girl. Okay, I did that in the wrong order. I should have made the guy gain attack, but I'm not sure it's gonna matter off of off the top of my head. Hey, um, I, I, I feel like you're being kind of critical of the power of my attack. Want to deal 800 to me? The attack, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if this were the anime, you would already be dead. <laughs> God, uh, that's, that's so true. Know. That's actually correct. <laughs> Um, and end phase. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, my kingdom for interaction that doesn't target. Well, the good news is that I banish face down from the extra deck mainly by interacting, so I probably won't have Dreaming Nemorelia online next turn. Yeah, and I'm feeling great about that. It's gonna matter a lot, I think. <laughs> um, and this was not an ideal opener, which is shocking <laughs> given the deck I'm playing. Um, <laughs> okay. This like almost walks. Maybe. It could be anything. Yeah, for sure. Alright, stand by main. Yeah, so that doesn't do anything, so I guess we'll just uh, go tower. Yup. <laughs> Goodbye, VWXYZ, Dragon Catapult Cannon. Um, R.I.P. We will go... Yeah, 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 uh, just, uh, just more guys. Just, uh, more motherfucking guys. Uh, what we're going to do is, um, banish three face down for you. Um, YZ Dragon Tank, YZ Dragon Tank, and, uh, Super Alloy Beast Raptinus. Um, we go... Uh, declare your effect. Just tribute one of this guy's to put a trap card in line. The trap card's pretty good. Um, let's have this online. Um, go, uh, Kuwait. <laughs> and, uh, just, 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 just go for it. Uh, this guy is bigger now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will... On attack deck, I think I am going to amaze attraction thrill train. Yes! The guy that's attacking. <laughs> Absolutely! 
<laughs> um, you know what? I respect the train. I'm gonna negate the train. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be the last uh, Raptinus. All right, my train has been negated. Um, you've cleared my note, Penguin. All right. Um, and then. Oh, but whoa, 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 calm down. No, I'm just, I'm just giving you intentionality. <laughs> um, but so you're attacking with, um, the, uh, Aurelo first? Yeah, beefy. Um, all right, cool thing. So the effect, the on-field effect of this card is once per turn. The activation is not. Thrill train target this guy. <laughs> okay, okay. And then on resolution, I will be banishing it until the end phase. <laughs> oh, that's not the kind of banish I want. Um, these two. Okay, I'll take 2,500. On the second cuet. A maze attraction horror house. You're going face down. Um, the, uh, cuet? Yeah. Okay. I've done it. All right. I'm in a winning position from here. You've done, you've done it. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> This and I be doing some white howling at this hand. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let's give it another try. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just off. wash it, wash it off, and next time it'll be it'll be a winner. Yep, yeah. All right, against I wishes uh, stated request, I am gonna do two Age of Overlord and two Duelist Nexus. Um, because there are stuff in both packs um, that we would like to see. There's not really any of them from Age of Overlord. Emperor Charles. I'm gonna need to check if that is anything. <laughs> and an Altergeist card. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter too much. Uh, game two. While that went about as expected, at least we get a couple more packs to open, right? Um, I mean, it's not like a good pack, but we did get to open it, which is cool. Um, Snake I Oak is like slightly relevant, but we don't have enough, so. Bad life. Let's toss that into the collection and, uh,. Try to do a bit better game too, at least. See, I'm an EP girl in real life. I just completely lost my train of thought. Okay. Um. It's gone. I could say something. You, I, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. What just uh, fucking work for a living for change. How about that, <laughs> Sophie? God, that's so true. You work for your fucking I was, paycheck. I, was... I give you. I was not walking for a change for this. I'm gonna be so real with you what happened <laughs> with this deck building. But right, I was doing my deck building on Friday after the stream, as I usually do. And I came up with a couple ideas and I was trying them out, and I realized they were both like really fucking bad. <laughs> um, but then I thought to myself, do I really want to spend more time on this? And the answer was no. Uh, so we're playing Penguin. <laughs> I'm gonna be so real. If you didn't run out penguins, I was gonna want to run out penguins uh someone had the to season someone Listen, had to. All, I, all i got to do is summon penguin brave once and i'll be satisfied <laughs> oh wow this is almost a good hand if it wasn't not good <laughs> <laughs> um but no this is i will say i think this is a better set two pass than last time so i got that going for me um dreaming... actually i set this too okay remember when that happened yeah for sure um Dreaming on activation twister um that is so cool dreaming nemorelia ah i see <laughs> <laughs> i understand the problem i will i will just let you know this deck does have nine copies of dreaming nemorelia <laughs> <laughs> it had to you know um i mean yeah um we will get the uh tower into rotation yeah Damn, this thing's not even a hard one. I couldn't even have changed to the effect to turn it off. We will go Sweet Dreams Nemorelia. Um, and because of the way this works, you cannot respond to my Nemorelia monster effects <laughs> for the rest of the turn. Mm hmm. Um, we'll grab the fairy this time, because we learned last time that the field spell doesn't search the fairy. <laughs> Learning new it things. It sure doesn't. Um,. We will use the field, uh, this isn't a field spell, it feels like a field spell. Every sp I mean, you know, so one thing I've known is that in a in progression series is a continuous spell can be a field spell if you want it to. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, I already have the fairy in hand, so I actually didn't 
and search that uh, with the spell card. I, just, I remember that. We're actually. just getting, honestly, we're just getting one of every single name. We can do that with this setup um, because I already have the fairy in hand, so the typing doesn't matter. We want a revile. And we want... Ooh, actually, do we want that? Uh, no, not yet. It's it's too much. We don't need it. Um, yeah, Olier. Uh, I mean, we'll just summon out the free guys uh, while I figure uh -huh. out the rest of my life. Um, and then this guy is just banished three face down. So, yeah, we will just leave it here for now. Um, attack! You, you killed my bot. I hope you feel. I hope you, I hope you feel good about yourself. We also did this before we attacked the monster. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to pay cost for the uh, guy? The yes, banish one face down. Man, dude, this targeting protection kicking my ass. Let me tell ya. <laughs> No, I am rather than I missed it. What I should have done was, um, yeah, I should have chained. Yeah, I'll talk about it after. But this is technically. Oh, wait, no, it's not a play because of how that works. Um, wait. Oh, no, I don't have enough life points to do this. Shit. God, I'm close to having a really funny line. Uh, but I don't think I have the life points to make it work. Would you have the life points uh, to make it work if I hadn't cheated uh, with Olier? Yes, I would, actually. Then that is no longer <laughs> canon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this guy doesn't win me the game. I'm not sure it even functionally does anything. Just... Uh, but we're going to try. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, but this doesn't work in either way, because I have to use my normal summon for that. Um, trying to think of a way to finesse it. See, I want to say I shouldn't have set the bod, but I would have died if I didn't set the bod. So I guess I should have set the bod. But, <laughs> would you believe, <laughs> I, I could almost do something, but I'm pretty sure I actually just can't do shit. <laughs> would you believe that? <laughs> Listen, I would, I, I, would like have, that. I would have plays if this card said up to two, uh, but it does not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I no. just need the plunder in hand. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, trying to see if there's any way I can do it. Because the problem is I need to not use my normal summon, because I need to normal summon this. But because of that, I don't have any way to get this out of hand, and uh, uh, <laughs> I can admit, I may have gone, I may have gone a little too far with this one. <laughs> oh no, I, I I'm sorry, and, and I, feel, I like... feel responsible for making fun of you for trying to make bad decks in the first half of the season. No, 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 and, 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 and it's a big deal, there are hands in the deck that do more than this, there's like, you know, a number of cards that actually like, make a play, uh, we didn't draw any of them. It also doesn't yeah. help that, like, you know, the deck does rely on a lot of traps to help even up things, um, you know, that it's a bit lower power, and those just happen to line up really badly against this card. Yeah. I think another thing I should have done was, because, because you activated the Sweet Dreams before activating the effect of the Continuous spell, right? Yes. Yeah, because would that would have given me a chance to Terrors, um, like, chain Terrors to the activation of the Continuous effect. Yeah. Um, you had a card in the graveyard, and that would have cut you off of two guys, which yes. is like, which put me in a much better spot. Um, yeah, for sure. No, um, doesn't. Yeah, Dream Tower. Issue. Dream there Tower of uh, Princess Nemorelia is a house of a card. I, I'm going to if if you want to like hit this deck, I will be sad that it didn't get to do necessarily a whole lot because yeah. like I tested <laughs> um, this deck with I wish I was dead. <laughs> And mm -hmm. he, like, built a version of your fusion deck that just summoned, like, five monsters turn one. And this was able to, like, chew through them over a course of time. Like, in a sealed format, Nemorelia is, like, a real thing. <laughs> no, for sure. No, for sure. Which is very cool. And this is the thing. I don't want to hit this deck too much. Um, because it is really cool. That said, for the sake of making any watchable content... Well, that, even, that won't even be watchable. Because I'm, I'm trying to think... Okay, because the problem is... <laughs> if, we, if I want this deck to not shit on my deck, the easiest thing to do is to ban Dreaming Nemleria. That makes your deck completely unplayable, I'm Correct. pretty sure. Um, Why would you ban her? She's so eepy. She's just I don't, eepy. See, see, what I was going to suggest is for the sake of content, we ban Nemleria, then bring her back immediately after this game. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and I and I do some VR bands. But the problem yeah. is, can you do anything if you don't have Numenaria? Um, I guess if you let me, um, if I use my um red potan to get one of the pendulum monsters i just pulled and get that into the face of extra deck i can summon these guys <laughs> let's fucking do it let's yeah it. <laughs> okay so for the first time uh, in the history of double progression trouble we're doing a take backsies ban we just invented yeah. it <laughs> This is a temporary ban for one game so that my <laughs> dog shit deck I was too lazy to improve on. Play the game. Okay, um, I will talk to you in a second after I do some side decking. Alright, so uh, sometimes you try an experiment and it doesn't work. Uh, unfortunate for Sophie, good for us. Uh, to Age of overlord what the fuck is a king's sarcophagus it's horus related um yeah another horus card i don't think we have remotely the horus stuff to do anything we'll add that to the collection and play game three Uh, Sophie, I'm going to be real with you. Since we are inventing a completely new rule and mechanic out of nowhere, I am taking this opportunity to cheat. I have, at, I, rather than do just Red Potan, because I realized that my deck was truly unplayable in that situation, I have added a Jack in the Hand uh, engine to the deck, is what I have decided to do as my little cheaty. What those other Jack in the Hand targets will what those Jack in the High End targets exactly will be is for you to discover over the course of this game. But I think that you will find my choices relatively uh, well balanced for the match. <laughs> Intriguing. <laughs> I, I was looking through my deck. It's to get like obviously like no hand in this deck is gonna be like good. But there is like a like like a very high percentage of them at least do something. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll find one of those. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I believe in you. Oh, you're fucked now! <laughs> it's over, Jeff! Holy shit! I will set one monster. And because a monster was set, I will activate the effect of the Penguin Squire! Let's go! <laughs> I will special Sophie, summon this call. I want everybody to be aware at this point. Sophie has the Goaty engine. She could go into Goaty with this play. If she wanted to. <laughs> um, I'm going to reduce its level by two. Um, yeah. <laughs> and flip and the then, guy face up. I'll use it to fact to flip up the no penguin. Yes! <laughs> and now, by tuning my level three penguin squire with my level three no penguin, I will summon the best level six water synchro <laughs> available. I'm talking about penguin brave. Oh my fucking god. And when this card is summoned, I'll special summon a penguin from my deck face down. <laughs> and because the effect of a penguin monster was activated, the mandatory effect of no penguin will also activate to summon itself. <laughs> Waboom! And oh furthermore, I summon recently unbanned king, the return of the Gravekeeper's Guard clones. It's Nightmare Penguin. <laughs> and now this isn't just a Gravekeeper's Guard clone, it's a banish! It is. No penguin makes it banish. When you activate a monster effect, I can use Penguin Brave to flip my Nightmare Penguin face up at quick speed. You, it's, it's unwinnable for you. You can't win from here. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, let's see if we can get a little bit deeper into our deck. Uh, Jen the Diamond Tiger. Um, yeah, that's fine. Declare effect. Yeah. It will go... Yeah, sorry, just thinking through, um, strategy. Yeah, how dare you think, you bitch. <laughs> um, Not like I fought a single time today. Not <laughs> <laughs> that monster's effect will activate. We will draw two and discard one, and it's going to be Nemorelia Lu. Um, Once and, again. I mean, we will activate <laughs> Dream uh, Tower of Princess Nemorelia. Um, yeah, that seems pretty good. Uh, we will... <laughs> 
Finish, finish. Um, to thin out the deck a tiny bit for now. Unfortunately, we go you, we go you. Yeah, we can at least get that started. I'm going to special summon. Nope, nope, that's the I'm wrong one. How are you doing that? <laughs> I clicked on the wrong one. It's fine. It's all good. I am doing great. It's going to be a uh, re re reveal. Uh, banishing three face down for yeah. the extra. Well, well actually, wait. I, I, how does this work? I... I think... Because I think... Yeah, I actually am going to chain Penguin Brave to the activation hand. Okay. The way I'll chain Brave, that'll flip up Knight. I can't do this. Wait, what? Hold up a fucking second. I thought it was Oh, like... no, it works, it works, it works. Yeah, okay, I, I think it works the way you're thinking. No, 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 no. I thought, I thought this card could miss the timing. Um, oh, man, no, 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 no. It's That's what, yeah. Uh... Um, <laughs> so yeah, th then, then on a new chain, after the flip resolves, the summon resolves. Yes. Then Nightmare or Penguin trigger, then I'll target Reveil to bounce that. But because of no Penguin, it actually gets <laughs> banished. That's true. God, this deck is so good. <laughs> All right. We don't have a huge amount of extension beyond that. That's um, crazy. Why? So, because... because <laughs> 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 All right. Um... Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna activate mm. Perform a Pal Trump Witch. K Kona, yeah. Um. Also, actually, kind of relevant that all of my water monsters are now buffed by 200 attack points. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um. <laughs> all right, we will set one card, and uh, unfortunately, we gotta send it back your way. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> God, it's all due to the immense power of this deck. <laughs> um, Jess, I'm going to tell you, it's just over for you. I will tribute Note Penguin to summon the Great Emperor Penguin. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's, the, that's the guy! <laughs> wait. No, I guess I think, does Note Penguin activate on a, I think Note Penguin has to activate on a new chain, right? Because it's not a quick effect. Yeah, I think I think that like uh, no penguin is fine here. Well, well, no. The question is, cause I'm not I guess I'm not 100% sure if it activates on a new chain or chains to the activation. Because if it chains to the activation, then it mandatory comes back, takes up a zone, and I can only summon one off the Great Emperor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We can solve this problem. Um, by the power of link summoning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it chains right. to the activation. Yeah, I thought so. So I'm gonna summon Aria. There she is. Hey, what's up? Um, and I will now activate Great Emperor and mandatory chain no penguin. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> no nope. penguin is the ultimate chain block. It's the ultimate no. Nobody has ever said no like no yeah. penguin. Can you, sk listen, are you allowed to have Nemleria in this match? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what are, what are we even summoning here? I want to summon in some fucking guys. I'm gonna be so real with you. <laughs> um, I guess we'll summon a square, and we'll summon um. This one's gotta be the funniest one, right? Yeah, I'm gonna summon the penguin cleric. <laughs> True. Okay, I'm gonna activate its effect. To cause my penguin brave to gain 600 attack and I gain 600 life points. Yes! Let's go! So that's gonna be at 3,000 because Nightmare's off the board. I'll oh, gain this, 600. Why is this not permanent? Why are you like this, penguin cards? Um. And then. Let's see, I don't really have a good. Be, because Squire can only go into level 8 synchros. So not, or, or can only go into Waddles, rather. It's not a great level 8 target, but that is okay. Um, because we can, we still have many a play to make. Um, and by many, I mean exactly one play, <laughs> um, is what I mean. So I am going to link off area, cleric, and no penguin. Um, and I'm gonna go in to Marinthas Great Bubble Reef. Let's go! Okay, what's this card do? I have achieved woman who draws me card. <laughs> Okay. 
And it's really good because I'm drawing penguin cards, so it's high impact. <laughs> and now, check this shit out. I'm gonna activate salvage. Oh my god, we resolved it this time. Let's fucking oh, go. Oh, we are wamboing, all right? I'm gonna add back to my hand, um, penguin cleric and nightmare penguin. Yes. And let's see, I could go for this or I could go for that. Um, and you know what? We might as well give, um, my other friends a little bit of a chance here. Actually, you probably shouldn't. But what if I do anyway? Fuck it. I won't use my normal summon on Whitebeard, the Plunder Patrol hound. All right, the Plunder Patrols are back, motherfucker. It's so back. God, you're not ready for how crazy this is gonna go if you put a Earth and or Dark Monster in the field or graveyard. <laughs> um... <laughs> Battle phase! Uh, yeah. Eh. Um... Did I not send this Diamond Tiger back to hand? I thought it was intentional, because you didn't go to battle phase. Oh. Well, it wasn't, but it's fine. <laughs> it is... Is it, is it... <laughs> it is simply yeah, fine. Then. The penguins need it. <laughs> um, they're not gonna quite get it so easily, though. We will go Lou. Oh no. How could this happen? Um... We will summon a big, beefy, Nemorelia Dream, uh, Defender. Yeah, this does have to summon in defense. Oh no! Then maybe not that. Um, it's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be the fairy in that case. She's got a big ass. Uh, that is not a level ten beast. <laughs> God damn it! Why do these cards have that text? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why this one's a fairy. It's very strange. Yeah. Um, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Nemorelia or one level ten beast monster. Oh. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> literally gaslighting her way into a win and i'll keep doing it <laughs> what's the problem <laughs> I, unfortunately i do get entirely owned by a monster with 3000 defense points um but that's fine um uh, i'll go to end phase get that bitch back in hand sure Right, Not um, so fast! Yeah. In your standby phase, I'll activate the effect of Bubble Reef, banishing my Penguin Squire from the graveyard to draw one card. Oh no! Holy fuck! Oh, and shit. then, because a monster was banished face up, this card gains 600 attack until the end of the turn. Oh no! Um, and this is, I believe... Yeah, the Brave is back down to normal. Boom! Then, in that case, um, we go you. Mm-hmm. Uh, banish face down, banish face down, to go, uh, you, and we're gonna go, um, you. Uh, you, Gio. Um, you, Gio. We're gonna banish three face down. Arguably, you, Gio. <laughs> Uh, we will special summon this one, and because we s uh, we can send one level 10 beast from hand or phase of field to the graveyard and set a trap from deck. Yeah, see, I, see I'm so kind to you. I've given you so many dead level 10 beasts this <laughs> Um, we will, uh, set the repeater. Um, we will... Uh, Ah, oh, fuck it. Uh, for old time's sake, Jack in the hand. Wait, I don't have three level ones. No. <laughs> oh. No, that's devastating. <laughs> I had such a good third target too. Oh. Oh, oh that was a misclick, but. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad I got to see him. <laughs> um. Yeah. Just... yeah you, you can have that oh. if you want him. Uh, we're not gonna get to Jack the hands, folks. That's sad. Um. Honestly. It's actually really hard to get a pendulum scale into your face-up extra deck. It's got to be said. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, is it time for a good old set pass line? Um. No, no, we have plays. Um, Can't be. It's not quite a set pass uh, angle. It is. Um. 
we could just get two monsters out on the board. That's all we need, but we simply don't have a line to do that. So instead, I am going to tribute summon Behemoth, the king of a hundred battles. Yo? I am not going to declare it's on summon effect. And we will go attack. to battle phase, attack Penguin Brave. Um... Yeah, so I'll take 300, but then just, oh I'll activate God. the effect of my Penguin Cleric. When a penguin is destroyed by my opponent's card, I can summon <laughs> it in face down defense position. <laughs> Alright, well, we accomplished a whole lot this turn. End phase, I gained 700 attack. Uh, this Yo. card is unaffected by the activated effects of special summoned monsters. Um... That... You see, that is a little concerning, I will admit. Yeah, so that is the, that's the board. Alright. End phase, guess what? You have a dark monster in the graveyard. So I will activate the effect of Whitebeard the Plunder Patrol Helm to summon a Plunder Patrol with the same attribute of the monster you control or in the graveyard. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And oh my god, you have an Earth too! Uh, we don't really want to go for that though. I will... Uh... I will summon Plunder Patrol Ship Mowok. All right, folks. It's all been leading up to this. This is <laughs> and the equip it with White Beard. This is the end boss. This is the moment. This is the truth. Um. Also, no Penguin mandatory came back on the cleric activation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> there it is. I draw. Oh, that's crazy. God, that would be so good if your monster could be affected by the effect of special summon <laughs> monsters. Um. Stand by our bubble reef. Yeah. Uh, so we'll banish this, we'll draw, and that's gonna put our back up to 3200. Alright, and now... I will flip summon the Penguin Brave. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we gotta clear a bit of space. God, this, this no penguin is actually fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is an activated effect. Um, oh, actually it's fine because we can literally just do this. Check this shit, shit, shit out. I will set one monster. <laughs> yeah. I will activate the effect of Penguin Squire to flip it face up. Oh no! And I, and I will target your monster with the normal set Nightmare Penguin. Um, does Nermelia Repeater save me? I think so. Send, uh... One level 10 beast monster. Oh, but I have to still nah. send my guy to the graveyard. <laughs> it, it die either way. No! <laughs> How can we All lose? I had to do was take away the card that makes your deck playable. <laughs> oh, I was working at I was working at maximum yeah. brain cells. These two guys. Um, I drew fucking <laughs> yeah. this guy as well. He's here. Listen, I got to do all of my plays back oh, no. Like, this deck has a non-zero number of plays. They're not very good, but it has them. <laughs> and I'm glad we were able to engineer a situation <laughs> in which we could see them. Yeah, uh, so Sophie used her ban this week to uh, ban for exactly one game, Dreaming Nemorelia. Um, it is yeah. now back in the format. <laughs> It um, is, it is. I mean, I, I got Nemorelia... fucking banned though, right? Because I got fucking pooped on. <laughs> yeah, I guess you do. Mm -hmm. I uh I this this is a cool deck and it's a shame that uh we <laughs> didn't see get it at its like beefiest challenge but uh, yeah no no I definitely don't want to kill the deck um that doesn't feel necessary yo is that Tistina the, the divinity that defies darkness it is Tistina <laughs> the divinity that defi <laughs> defies darkness ah uh, that goes hard um. Just putting yeah. all these uh, VW guys engraved to <laughs> like important. give you other considerations for what you could ban. Right, right. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So this is, you know. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I what the fuck am I banning, Sophie? <laughs> okay. So I can help you out a little, as long as you can think of a second a second card to limit. Because assuming we're still committed to being pro woman. Um, in the in-between game packs, I did pull the second Little Knight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh might, might want to limit that, potentially. If we're keeping her around still. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Um maybe um do you have a badum limit you can think of? Oh, fuck if I know. Um, <laughs> what's like a dumb card? Oh no. It's like, it feels like we should hit Terra with the Overrun, but it has not been a problem. It, no, no, Terra's well, with the Overrun like has it. nothing to friend. do with anything. Mm-hmm. Oh um, no. <laughs> <laughs> we could bedum Tistina, the divinity that defies darkness, for we comedy We could um, bedum <laughs> limit uh, SP Little Knight and No Penguin. <laughs> you are arguably- <laughs> No Penguin is really bad, you probably shouldn't play more than one anyway. <laughs> hey, come on, this card's cool. No, on honestly, I'm down for it, for the bet. I love the bet. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, memorialize Penguin's appearance on DPT by limiting <laughs> no Penguin, and side by side, we're going to limit the SP Little Knight that so yeah. we found a second copy of because she is a gamer. Yeah, um, actually, I think if that is uh, if that's the badum, I think the funniest thing you could do with your ban is ban Nightmare Penguin again. <laughs> <laughs> I might, okay, but I might have something else to ban, oh? just because, like, I might hit something from the Chimera engine, uh, just because, yeah, like, that whole, that whole fusion line is very good, and I have some of it, but I think you have more of it mm. than I do. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I, I decided, I think, you know, I am gonna support EP Girl rights. Um, and so with my second ban, because I got too old, um, I'm just gonna ban Triple Attack. Yeah! <laughs> Finally. <laughs> it came, it was the reason I won this match, folks. Let it be known. Uh, Literally, nothing, the only reason. Nothing, nothing could have, uh... Listen, listen, if I'd had no penguin, um, in game one, it would have made the difference. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, Nemorelia lives to EP Girl another day. I'm a huge fan of this deck, even though this deck is now mixed with some insane jack-in-the-box shit. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, we're playing Melfi Caddy, who, in my personal lore of this deck, is, uh, Dreaming Nemorelia's personal cat, who summons, sense. uh, horrible spirits of the night to guard her human at all costs. That's cute. That's so cute of her. Um, but this is a, this is a very silly deck. It would make, uh, uh, fucking... The Eater of Millions, the best card in the format. Yeah. No, God, like, like even in Constructed, the stack plays Eater of Millions, which makes me happy. <laughs> I like that guy. Uh, but speaking of Constructed, we are right up to the, right up to the front, to the thick of the, to the, uh, tip of the, uh, to the, the shaft of the, to the, the, we, no. we, we, we do you have we're any? We're almost up to, we're up to current, we're up to current TCG, guys, have... that's what is happening. <laughs> do you have anything to say about, uh, your deck or the match, or you want to talk about the last one? Um, not necessarily, unless we want to figure out your ban, I just want to say, Behemoth, the king of a hundred battles, is the funniest card to me. Because we really are just at the point where you can print a level seven or higher monster and just say it only needs one tribute, though. Like, that's fine. <laughs> um, this has been a Who huge. Uh, this has been a huge example of power creep for sure. Um, let's <laughs> talk about the most recent sets. Insane thing to say, but yeah, I was looking at this audio. Lot of cool stuff in Phantom Nightmare. Lot of really nifty stuff. Um, we get the Goblin Riders here, which are relatively low rarity and are a really competent rank 3 engine, which is cool. Maybe the most relevant thing is that what we get in here is more Goaty support. Yes. Um, a deck that has truly just not been hit. Um, and these cards are really, really good. Yeah, more Goaty support is um, really, really relevant. Uh, Mystic Potato, of course, will be the best card in the format. Um, it has to be. Um, there's also Raid Raptor stuff here that I am hoping to yeah, get. Yeah, could matter. Um, and then uh, I was going to ask you, how did your Snake Eye pulls go? Because I got, like, four different, cop four different like, uh, uh, super rares and then a rank uh rank four pyro uh king of the feral imps um i'm so happy to tell you i own two total snake eye monsters and they're both oak 
Uh, so maybe, yeah, maybe, this, this is a high rarity archetype, so there's no yeah. uh, huge uh, likelihood that they're going to come up. Uh, but a lot of other stuff in this set is. And then we are, in addition to Phantom Nightmare, going to uh, do a little pack opening buffet, folks. Yeah. We are going to open four packs from... Um, okay, so do we want to do a couple packs from set like the Sevens era as well? We could. I don't know that we need to. Yeah, you know. I, that's what I was kind of thinking is that like twenty four twenty four is like a fine um, uh, number yeah. to be. And the at. fact that like it ends up being twenty four, like that's perfect. You yeah. Know? Yeah. We uh, we've seen a bunch of the Sevens era, so uh, it's going to be six packs each from. Um, uh, DM, GX, 5Ds, Zexel, ArcV, and Vrains, folks. And uh, we will uh, deal with whatever comes out of that. Uh, there are a couple of scenarios where nothing happens. There are also scenarios where one of us pulls, like, fucking delinquent duo mm -hmm. and ruins a week. So um, <laughs> we're gonna... Yeah, but here's the thing, honestly... Like we are in a we are in an era of Yu-Gi-Oh where it feels like well like I feel like good decks in this in at this point can play through delinquent duo. That's true. Enough. Um, we the power level of the format has just gotten to an absurd degree. So maybe like uh the other one, the forceful sentry would be a better example because that really yeah, just never feels back. good. <laughs> yeah, triple tech. The card that just got banned. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, you have anything else to leave the people with? Uh, do, do you want to do your ban? Mm, that's a great thing to leave the people with. <laughs> do, do you want? Um, yeah, I guess for variety's sake, we'll ban Gazelle. Um, Farewell, Gazelle. You, think you did your job well last match. We have decided to uh, kill a mystical animal. Uh, we are very sorry, and we will not we, we, let Yeah, we've this. killed a mystical animal, a penguin, um, 50% of a woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's where Many we're, 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 we're going to end it. It's done. We, we, we need to get out of This has been Double Progression Trouble. The score remains tied at seven points all. If you want to see what happens next, leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe to Sophie apparently as well by clicking on her name in the video title. Thank you to Illusory B and Patson for your support on Patreon, and we'll see y'all next time. All right, well, time to open the two most earned packs in the history of the series. Um, second buff from that cool doesn't do much, though, without Gazelle, R.I.P. to my king. And... This pack just doesn't like us. Outside of SP, which I guess is pretty good, huh? All right, bye bye See you next time for the last one.